Welcome back to Rich Stadium, Orchard Park, New York. Along with Len Dawson, this is Sam Nofer. And the Buffalo Bills and New England Patriots are about to set it up on the kicking tee. 67 degrees here at game time on characteristic of Buffalo in November. Wouldn't you say, Len? Hey, I've been coming here since 1957. Nothing against the Chamber of Commerce of Buffalo, but I think this is the, the fourth time that I've seen the sun shining on a football afternoon. <laughs> A fabulous day for football. The wind out of the southwest, 12 miles per hour. Kind of a swirling wind on the floor here of Rich Stadium. David Posey about to set, kick it deep to the Buffalo Bills. Keith Moody, 46, is the deep man in the middle at his five-yard line. 20. 30. Out of bounds at the 35. An excellent return by Keith Moody. Knocked out by the man who kicked the ball, David Posey. And so the Buffalo Bills, with their first possession, will put it in play from the 35-yard line. Joe Ferguson, the quarterback. There's the great rookie, Terry Miller. And Curtis Brown is the fullback. Wide receivers, Lewis Chandler and Ruben Gant. Bob Chandler, number 81. He is the man that Ferguson loves to go to. They expected a crowd of somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 45,000. It may have swelled considerably with the uh, beautiful day here in Buffalo. Both Lewis and Chandler split wide left in the I formation. Now Chandler in motion. And the pitch is to Terry Miller, the deep back. Five yards to the 40. Brought down by Mel Lunsford, number 72. Table on the stop. Steve Zabel, also the veteran linebacker, nine years out of Oklahoma. Here's the offensive line of the Bills. Yes, they've got two former All-Pros in McKenzie and DeLamalier. Willie Parker, the veteran center. Second down, about five Bills. Roland Hooks replaces Miller in the backfield. He wears number 25. Give to Curtis Brown couple of yards maybe the 42 yard line in the grasp of Lunsford 72 Brown carrying step by Lunsford two yards and here's that tough defense at uh, yeah, Lun Lunsford uh, Hamilton and Bishop Hamilton and Bishop they have little injuries they're hopeful that they can get by this game without aggravating those injuries they also have a superb core of linebackers Zabel Nelson Hunt and show Nelson has four interceptions three fumble recoveries the man who's always around the football. Big third down for Ferguson early in the game. About three to go. Chandler in motion coming your way. He's got to go up top. He's got to throw. Good protection. Oh, and it's incomplete. Ball was deflected at the line of scrimmage by one of the defensive men. He had good protection. Fox uh, had the coverage, but somebody got a hand on it, as Len pointed out. And so Ferguson coming to the sidelines to confer with Chuck Knox. The Bills will have to kick it away. Well, he was looking all the way for the man in the middle, followed the receiver all the way. Perhaps what he should have done is look the other way first to, to maybe draw the attention away from who he's trying to throw to. But a big hand got in his face. That was the reason that ball was incomplete. Rusty Jackson kicking to Stanley Morgan back at his 20-yard line. Morgan awaiting the kick. Short kick. Morgan fumbles the ball. The scramble is on, and the Bills have it. They're going to score. Randy McClanahan, touchdown Buffalo! I believe they may call it back. It appears as if the play was dead at the New England 20-yard line. Here it is again, Len. Taking a look, the wind you mentioned is swirling down there. This created a problem, as you can see. He wasn't under the ball the way that he would like to. Now it's up to anybody diving after it. Buffalo coming up with the football, but they can't advance it. He's down. They're going to get a first and ten from the 20 and great field position and a great break, a break for the Buffalo Bills. Well, a 33-yard punt on the part of Rusty Jackson. Not a particularly good one, but the results are fabulous if you're a Bills fan. They whistled the play dead at the New England 20. The Bills put it in play. Chandler is slotted left. Frank Lewis, 82, is split wide left. Now Chandler goes in motion. Pitch to Terry Miller. Gets a block. 15, 10, and out of bounds at the 6. Joe DeLamalier is the man leading the interference. And they spotted the 7-yard line. And also give credit, Sam, to 
fullback Curtis Brown, number 47. You can see him going around leading the way for Harry Miller, number 40. When you get a back out in front, you get a, an offensive back with the ball five yards downfield with interference. He's going to make some yards. Miller must have felt very comfortable with that play at Oklahoma State. They called it student body right, didn't they, Lynn? <laughs> so it's first down and goal, Buffalo at the New England six-yard line. Brown, 47, rolling hook, 25, the setback. Pitch to Brown out of bounds at the five. May have gotten a yard, yard and a half on the play. But Ferguson doing something that's a little bit out of character, running the option. Well, that's for sure. Down there, the option is a good play because if you make a commitment by the defensive end or the linebacker, you got a shot of getting into the end zone. But credit number 48, Tim Fox, the free safety, from coming up making a big play. If he hadn't made the tackle, that was six points. So it's second down, Buffalo, goal to go at the New England Five. If you have just joined us, the Bills try to capitalize on a fumble punt by Stanley Morgan. High formation. The second man through is Miller. Maybe the three-yard line. Lunsford is on top. 64, Richard Bishop is also there, and at the bottom, Steve Nelson, 57, who, as we indicated to you, is almost always around the football. That last play, I think perhaps Ferguson might have been checking off because the Patriots jumped up there with their linebackers, jumped up with their safety, then pulled back. I think what they're trying to do perhaps is confuse Ferguson on what whether it's going to be a blitz or not. The way to get out of that is get up and get off on a quick count. Miller out, looks in. Chuck Knox shuffling his running backs, using them as messengers. Third down, goal, Buffalo. Over the middle! Frank Lewis thrown in behind him. Pass was a bad one by Ferguson. Apparently he saw that Lewis was covered on the initial pattern, went to him late and threw it in behind him. They had a crossing pattern on that particular play. With the ends going from one side to the other, you can see right there that Lewis is going from the bottom of your screen to the top of your screen. He has a step. If the ball had been thrown properly, low and outside, it would have been a touchdown. So Tom Dempsey will attempt the three-pointer. The ball will be spotted by Chandler at about the 11-yard line. 21-yard field goal attempt by Tom Dempsey. And there is a very interesting story. He has an anniversary coming up this Wednesday. Bobble, placement is good, and so is the kick. We'll tell you about Dempsey's anniversary later. And so the first points in the afternoon are scored by the Buffalo Bills. Tom Dempsey, 21-yard field goal, 3-0 Buffalo. will be back in a moment. Concerned, but certainly not wanting to panic. Chuck Fairbanks on your left. Joe Ferguson, the Buffalo quarterback, on your right. Well, he's concerned because it's difficult to have a team reach a peak like they did last week against the New York Jets every week. So he knows there's a, po a possibility of a letdown today. Knox feeling rather good at the moment. 3 nothing Buffalo. Early on, first quarter, Tom Dempsey set to kick it to Raymond Claiborne. At about his 10-yard line. Dempsey's kick is high and short. Claiborne at about the 22-yard line. Tries to get outside at the 30. And is dragged down at the 33-yard line. Steve Powell, number 23, is the man who brought him down. And so excellent field position for the Patriots, as they put it in play for the first time this afternoon. Penalty marker was down. Referee is Chuck Heberling. Let's await his call. Calling the New England captain over for a conference. Steve Grogan and the offensive unit coming on the field. Be interesting to see what they do offensively. I'll get into them in a second after we hear what the penalty is all about. Offside, number 51. Offense, re kick. Well, they'll do it again. And while Mr. Heberling spoke to you, let's tell you the supporting people on his crew, the umpire Bill Ross, the headlines Manal Sabato, the line judges Bruce Alford, the back judge Paul Bates, the side judge Dave Perry, the field judge Bill Stanley. Your referee is Chuck Heberling. And so the offside call will force Dempsey to kick it from his own 30. Again, Claiborne Station in the neighborhood now of the 15-yard line. And the bill's kicking into that wind, Lynn. It, it has a factor. You can see the flag blowing around up there, particularly when you get the ball as high as Dempsey gets it. He really got it up in the air that time, but the thing only went to the 20-yard line. 
3-0 Buffalo, Dempsey's 21-yard field goal after the fumble by Stanley Morgan and the uh, recovery by Randy McClanahan. That shows you the confidence that the right. Patriots have. Now, they're backing up that they were had, they really had excellent field position after the last kick. But I think the wind is a factor, and they probably feel that he's not going to get it any deeper than the last time. They may have a shot of bringing it back. That all sounds good. Let's see what happens. Depends if he catches it. Yeah. Claiborne at his 18, five yards deeper from where he started the last time, but he's already passed the line of scrimmage, and he brought it back to the 40-yard line. So on the exchange, the Patriots net about seven yards. Claiborne returning the ball, and New England with excellent field position will start with this backfield. Steve Grogan at quarterback. Yes, Horace Ivory has earned the start over Andy Johnson. Cunningham is his running mate. When you talk about receivers, how do you defend against these three? Morgan and Jackson, the wide receivers, extreme speed, and Francis, an outstanding tight end. It's going to be difficult for the defense of Buffalo to hold them down. They send Johnson in motion. They apparently have switched at the last minute. Here's the screen pass to Cunningham. 45 midfield, first down into Buffalo territory. So after giving us the change and Morris Ivory starting, Fairbanks uh, throws a curve to us, Len, and slips Johnson back in there. But it's a first down play on the screen to Cunningham. The offensive line, two great all pros in Gray and Hannah. Len Kytus is a veteran. Adams, and they tell us Jordan is a real comer. Well, that defense of the Buffalo Bills is going to have their hands full, that defensive line holding, and it's going to be Williams, Hardison, Dokes, and Sherman White. Their work is cut out for them this afternoon. Well, now we've got Horace I free in the backfield. Cunningham straight ahead, a big hole to the 42-yard line. Cunningham, Terry. Gain of about six on the play, and already they are exposing the, uh, the gut of the Buffalo defense. Linebackers for the Bills, Shane Nelson, young. McClanahan was picked up from Oakland. Sanford is also very young. Here's the defensive backs, and the newcomer there is strong safety, Steve Freeman, replacing Doug Jones, who's out for a few weeks because of a knee injury. Jim McAllister now joins Cunningham in the backfield. So we'll see about everybody in the first series. McAllister takes the ball to the 39. He'll come up a yard or two shy of the first down. He's a former All-American from UCLA now in his third year. Jim McAllister stopped by Freeman. Fairbanks is showing us everything he's got offensively early on, Len. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, and it is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Buffalo Bills and the National Football League is prohibited. And now I see Andy Johnson. It's going to be that kind of day, folks. Well, they've got two tight ends in the ballgame. Hasselbeck is in. Johnson is the man on third and short yardage situations I like to go to because Cunningham 39 is next one. Third place. down one. Cunningham gets the ball. First down breaks the tackle inside the 35 to the 34 yard line. Stopped there by Lucius Sanford, number 57. And let's isolate on Big Sam Bam. Well, I said he was a great blocker, and he is. So is 32 Johnson. You can see right there why there was a hole there, why they sent 32 Johnson in the ball game, because he did an excellent job of blocking, and 39 Cunningham, an excellent job of running, which is going to make it difficult, as I said, for the Buffalo Bill defense. Cunningham closing in on 300 yards, and when he reaches it, he will be the fifth New England back to get there this season. First down, New England to the Buffalo 34. So far, everything we've talked about in the pregame show. Cunningham, that time, runs right into the arms of Benny Williams, a third-year man out of Mississippi, gains maybe a yard. But so far, Len, exactly as you put it, it's the uh, great running attack of New England against the very weak running defense of Buffalo. Well, they're number one, one in rushing for the New England pa uh, Patriots, number, or number 28 as far as rushing defense for the Buffalo Bills. I was not surprised when they came up through a screen pass the first play because they know that they can run on this football team. At least they feel that. Buffalo knows that what they have to do is stop them. So they may be over anxious early. Harold Jackson split wide right. Ivory and Cunningham with the setbacks and Brogan wants Jackson tipped up in the air and almost intercepted. Charlie Rome had a chance after Tony Green tipped it up in the air. Mario Clark also with the coverage. Number 29, Harold Jackson, extreme speed, and he is a great receiver. He has a way of getting open, but Mario Clark is there all over. Makes a good play, popping it up in the air, and generally, when a ball is popped up in the air like that, the people who have the opportunity to catch it 
are the defensive end because supposedly there's only supposed to be one offensive receiver in one particular area. Well, I gave credit for the tip to Tony Green. You saw very clearly it was Mario Park. Third down, seven. In motion, Andy Johnson. Turns upfield. Rogan rolling right. Now has to run for it at the 30. Brought down at the 31-yard line as he gave ground. Steve Freeman, the strong safety, came up to make the stop, shy of the first down. Sam Adams trying to give him a block, but to no avail, and so the Patriots have a fourth down situation. And I think perhaps uh, it may be out of the range of the kicker posing that he's coming in and maybe attempting. I say they may be attempting a field goal because this thing is going to have to travel. Let's see, it's on the 31-yard uh, line. 49 yards. Yes, sir. Spotted there by Dick Kahn at the 39-yard line. 49-yard attempt by David Posey to tie the ball game. 48-yard field goal attempt by Posey. He's got the leg. He does indeed, but he shot it wide. Posey had the distance, but he slid it wide of the upright. And so his 49-yard attempt is no good. And the Buffalo Bills have it back. They have held, and they lead 3-0. A glorious day in Orchard Park, New York. Nice to have you with us. Well, as you look at Buffalo head coach Chuck Knox, let me advise you that he told his players this week that this game will be the most important one they've played this season, maybe the most important in the history of the franchise. Do these guys react to that kind of stuff, Lynn? Well, yes, they do. They better react to it, or they're not going to be here next year. 31-yard line is the line of scrimmage. Eye formation. Terry Miller dots the eye, and Chandler goes in motion. First back is Curtis Brown, pulling his way to about the 34-yard line. It is not easy, as you can see, to run against the defense, the 3-4 defense of the Patriots. Big Sam Hunt, five-year veteran out of Stephen Austin, is a man who made the stop after a gain of two. Sam Hunt is a very fine linebacker, but if you're going to work on him, the one thing to do is try to get him involved in pass coverage because he's a big, strong man. If you try to run straight at him, he's going to be able to take you on. Chandler split wide right. Frank Lewis to the left. An excellent tight shot of Joe Ferguson, the Buffalo quarterback. Keith Moody cuts it back. 39, 40 yard line as he comes forward and may be close to the first down. Perhaps a yard or a half yard shy. It's Roland Hooks, I beg your pardon. Roland Hooks, number 25, the ball carrier. Well, on that last again. play, they moved Ruben Gant, the tight end, from one spot to the other. And they're pulling number 67, Reggie McKenzie. He's mad to try to get out in front. Good running and good blocking at the point of attack and coming up really with a big play because they need a first down right now. But I'll tell you something. In that big 24 to 14 win by Buffalo at New England last year, Moody, or rather Hooks, rushed for over 150 yards. Why do I keep calling him Moody, Leonard? Moody is my move. Third and short. down in the grass of Sam Hunt, number 50. But it's a first down for the Buffalo Bills. Let's check some scores. First quarter, Roy Jarella, 27-yard field goal to Steelers lead New Orleans. Also a first quarter score, Green Bay, 3-0 over Philly, a Chester Markle field goal. And the Cardinals over the Giants. Jim Hart to Al Chandler, five yards. And we have an injured player down. At the 45-yard line, it appears to be a New England Patriot. We'll check on it. Be back with more football here from Rich Stadium in Orchard Park, New York, in just a moment. With Len Dawson, Sam Nover, back at Rich Stadium in Orchard Park. How do you like the Bills' gut so far, Len? Well, they're doing, they're doing a job. I said we're going to find out about their character in the pregame show and their display that they do have character right now. Tim Fox was the injured player, barely had the wind knocked out of him. He's okay on the sidelines. Now you see Reuben Gant come strong side left, the tight end. And they run that way. Miller breaks the tackle into New England territory. Nine-yard pickup by Terry Miller. Dick Kahn is the man who made the stop, and then we had a chance to see that great explosion by Miller. Well, that's right. Number 64 for the uh, Richard Bishop for right there for the Patriots. Had an opportunity, but he broke the arm tackle. And that's what they're talking about, arm tackles. A good back. We'll be able to do that. Finally, number 22, Khan, brought him down. But on that play also, Ruben Gant started on the right side, and he switched to the left side. The reason they're doing it, they have some new uh, strong safeties in that ballgame. Second down, less than two. 
throws it up backfield. Brown gets the first down as he dives to about the 43 of New England. And so the Bills staying on the ground and doing very well. Mel Lunsford is the man who made the stop. And Lunsford has a few words for somebody as he looks back over his shoulder. Okay. Now, I'm saying, stop holding me. <laughs> it's the sad lament of many a defensive lineman. Well, they have to live with that. They don't know that the offensive linemen, they're, they're sworn to oath that they're not going to let anybody knock the quarterback down. The Bills have beaten Baltimore, Kansas City, and Cincinnati. They are 3-6 and six on the year, looking for their fourth victory. High formation, Chandler in motion. And Bedoin follows him across the field. Miller on the pitch to the 40. Still on his feet to the 38-yard line. Great individual effort by Terry Miller. Yes, sir, they're getting a kick. They're getting people out in front, and you're going to take a look at number 54, Steve Zabel, linebacker, and what he has to go through. Gant, number 88, the tight end. His job is to make sure he keeps him away, whether he does it by grabbing him or however it is. To keep that linebacker away from the running back. Finally, it was big Sam Hunt from over the top that put him out. Gain of five, second down five. They split Frank Lewis wide right, Chandler to the left. And again... Tight end Ruben Gant comes from the right side to the left side. This is Roland Hooks. And the Patriots neatly jam that up for nothing. The doing 27, Nelson 57. So it'll be a third down at about five here. But Doyne did a great job because he was the force man that time. He really jumped up across that line of scrimmage about three yards, making sure that it had to be turned in, giving the men from the inside an opportunity to pursue, shutting off the hole. Here's another first quarter score. Seattle is going on top of Chicago, 7-0. Sherman Smith, a one-yard run. A game being played at Soldier Field, Chicago. Third down and five. It's also a passing down. Look at, look at the Patriots up there. You don't know whether they're going to blitz or not. They may fake it and jump back, or they may come. Now they peel a couple of men off. Ferguson, good protection. Throws it out here and over the head of the intended receiver, Roland Hooks. He was checking off at the line of scrimmage. The Patriots had him full that time. They had everybody up looking like it might be an all-out safety blitz. And then at the last second, they jumped back. And what he did, he had to keep one of his backs in to give him additional uh, protection. So consequently, he's not spreading out the defense the way he wants to. The way to get out of that and get him out of that is come up and go on a quick count. And if you guess right, you might catch him for six points. Rusty Jackson ranking sixth in the AFC in punting, an average of 40.4. His net, however, is just 31.7. He'll try to put this one out of bounds inside the 10 if he can. He kicks it straight down the middle. How's that for a guess? Into the end zone. That was the old knuckleball shot. There. It was That's indeed. Uh, so the Patriots hold and get the football back, but they trail 3-0. When we return, it'll be first down for the New England 20. Another first quarter score, San Francisco has taken a 3-0 lead over Atlanta. Ray Wershing, a 20-yard field goal is broken, brings him up at the 20-yard line. They had one superb drive on their first possession. It ended, however, on a missed field goal attempt by David Bozen on the 20-yard line. Play, play action. Brogan, all the it throws, has a man, Harold Jackson, and he dropped the ball. Jackson. The coverage was by Randy McClanahan, the big linebacker. Jackson had the football to drop coverage. Well, I'll tell you, Harold Jackson is really tough to guard against for a linebacker. He's tough. And you see that 54 committed himself on the play pass, which is good. Now, perhaps if he'd have thrown the ball a little sooner, he would have had it or up over top. What happened right there is Jackson could not see the ball because the ball wasn't thrown and over his head the way it should have been. And upon a second chance looking at it, I think perhaps McClanahan has inadvertently got a hand in that ball then. Well, the ball had been thrown lofted over his head. Jackson would have been able to see it, run under it. But he got a man with that speed running with the linebacker. You got to assume he's not run it. Park, New York, and the Bills, as we near the end of the first quarter, with uh, just 2.05 to play, lead it 3 0. And Chuck Fairbanks is not pleased. Well, no, he's not pleased because things aren't going. They know that they should be able to run against this football team, and they haven't been able to do it that much so far in this, this possession. Third down, 10, five defensive backs. Marvin Schweitzer replaces Randy McClanahan. Rogan will have to put it up. Flag is down. He's got Jackson at the 40. Down at the 42-yard line. That will be good enough for a New England first down if the penalty is not against the Patriots. But they're bringing it back. Well, they were looking. They threw that right in the direction of number 61, Sam Adams, the right offensive guard for the Patriots. Big break for both. 
Buffalo so far of all the breaks they've been going for the Buffalo Bills. But when you get breaks, you must take advantage of them. So referee Chuck Heverling will walk off 10. And the Patriots will have third down again. Holding, Holding. offense, offense. Number, 61. number 61, third down. Oh, Dawson, you've got the eyes of the bionic man. I'll take it. I've had enough offensive linemen hold for me. I know. <laughs> Does I tell them, go ahead and hold. Yeah. Do Just anything. Do a professional job of it, though. Don't get caught. Five defensive backs still employed by Buffalo. Third down, 20 for Grogan. Everybody out. He's got Russ Francis at the 28, but he didn't get the first down. Oh, Francis peeled back. If he had fallen forward, he might have had it, but he elected to dip back, and he came up maybe a yard shy, but a flag is down. Let's see what this call is all about. It's in the backfield of New England. Usually that indicates a holding, but I don't know if that's the case here. It is not. He indicated flipping against the Buffalo Bill. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 70-70 defense. Oh, well, Ben Williams is the man. And so after Buffalo really held New England from the first down, Williams gives it to him on a personal uh, foul. That's really a very poor move on his part because he knows they got 20 yards to go from the first down. You'd never want to take a chance of doing that. There's a man back there. He's called the referee, and his sole job, or one of them, is to watch and protect that quarterback. 32, Cunningham 39 in the setbacks. First down as Jackson goes in motion. Here's Sam Bam across the 45 to the 47 yard line. And the former uh, Stop by Nelson Southern Freeman. California star picks up a quick four. Stop by Shane Nelson 59. And Stevie Freeman 52. I think what you're going to see now, Sam, is uh, the other Sam Cunningham is that they're going to go back to the ground because now they're in a position right now near the midfield mark. If they can pick up four and five yards a crack, they're going to be content to do that. Len, how are we going to get Grogan to be consistent? How does a quarterback achieve it? Well, a lot of times it just takes experience and maturity. Now, he can come up with some fantastic plays, but he also comes up with some fantastic plays for the other side. He's got to eliminate those. Second down, a little over five. Horace Ivory weaving his sure. way for the first down. What a great back this kid is. Ivory to the 45 of Buffalo. Brought down by Bring Lucius down. Sanford. But for those of you who had a chance to see the uh, Miami-New England game on NBC a couple of weeks ago, he did put on a heck of a performance. Make it out of here next week. Bill well, he has an outstanding line in front of him. There they're going to go to the left side because there are two men over there by the name of John Hanna, number 73, and Leon Gray, number 70. They're both all pro. When they get into a tight situation where they need a yard, look for the Patriots to go to the left side. It's no secret. They've done it so often. So the Patriots with the first down at the Buffalo 45. Cunningham down on his back. Number 59, Shane Nelson is the man who put him on his backside after he gained a yard, perhaps a yard and a half. Well, we played 15 rather quick minutes here, and surprisingly enough, the Patriots have yet to get on the scoreboard. They scored 88 points the last two weeks. Glenn Dawson, Sam Nover, back at Rich Stadium, Buffalo, New York, and on behalf of the A crew, our producer, Larry Cirillo, and our director, Harry Coyle, nice to have you with us. A fabulous day in Buffalo, 67 degrees, as you look at Chuck Fairbanks and his New England Patriots. Second down nine, they have it at the Buffalo 44-yard line as we start second quarter action. took a shot I'm talking about number 43 Tony Green he's the man that made that play because Francis had the ball in his hand and just as he was ready to bring it in he got nailed by number 43 Tony Green take a look at it good protection for Grogan steps up going deep number 81 the man has come up with a lot of big catches is Francis you can see right there 43 is Tony Green coming up with a good defensive play they're number one in defense and pass coverage in the AFC probably because they're last in rushing defense 
just the number 75 to put a little more pressure on Grogan. Comes into that defensive front four. Grogan on third down has a man at Francis at the 35, and down he goes. They had double coverage on this outstanding tight end, Russ Francis. And the four-year veteran from Oregon still beat him on a sideline pattern. And he may be just a hair shy of the first down, Len. Well, they did have two men, Marvin Switzer, number 21, and safety, number 22, Steve Freeman. Plenty of time. He's looking for Francis all the way, which is a bad habit for a quarterback. But it was a great throw because it hit him right on the numbers, and he caught it in his hand. Coming up just a little short. But they're going to go for it. They're going to go for it. They're just on about the 36-yard line. Well, they beef up that uh, center of the line. Bill Dokes has an injured shoulder. He's been replaced by Mike Kadish. Fourth down. They've got a yard to go. Cunningham. First down. Cunningham going over the left side of his offensive line, namely Leon Gray and John Hanna. Gets the first down to the Buffalo 33-yard line. I said earlier, when they get in a tight spot, they need a yard, they go to that left side. And the reason is they've got great linemen over there. They've got John Hanna, 73, number 70, Leon Gray, plus the tight end, and plus the back, Johnson, who's an excellent blocker. Len, I'm interested in something you said a moment ago, that he, Grogan, looked for Francis all the way. How long do you stay with your primary receiver? Well, you look at the defense first. You let the defense dictate where you go. But if you follow that man and they're in the zone defense, the defensive men are going to go right with your eye. This is Horace Ivory trying to get outside, cuts it back, breaks a couple of tackles to the 31-yard line. Ooh, Ivory could have been tackled for a two- or three-yard loss. But on great individual effort, he brought it back to the 31-yard line before Ben Williams finally halted his progress. So a gain of two. McClanahan limps off the field, number 54. Tom Graham comes on. And so the Bills going down on every play here. They've lost Dokes. Now McClanahan comes up. Well, he ran right out of his shoes. I'm talking about Horace Ivory. And you can see that there's number 54. Is McClanahan, the middle linebacker. How's this for first quarter stats, Len? The Bills out rushing the Patriots 56 to 30, would you believe? Rogan play action. As a man in. Kane <laughs> Nelson. 34. Fumbles the ball and the Patriots get it back. But they give it to Buffalo, I believe. They say he was down. I don't know about that. Well, I said before, you just got their asking. Looking at your primary receiver, Grogan going back, and he's following his man all the way. All the way, he's looking at his man, and he throws it right to the linebacker. That's why I say, that linebacker's following the eyes of the quarterback. If you're looking right at him, he's not going to go some other way. He's down. Once you hit down, that's a synthetic turf type of fumble. Once you hit the, hit the ground, your elbow, and the ball pops out. You are not absolutely fumble. right. As you see, the third interception this year for Shane Nelson. How does he hold a football I know, with his Look at all the padding he's got on his hands. And he caught that ball in his hands, too. <laughs> so the Bills have it, leading 3-0 at their own 34-yard line. Terry Miller finds a little daylight, fumbles the football. Patriots have it. Whether or not the whistle is blown, no. They say it's New England football. So the Patriots get it back on the first play from scrimmage. First quarter, the 48 box is back in the ball game, which is good. He was uh, injured early in the ball game, but you see, there's nothing but a lot of folks in there. Somebody's jerking that ball loose, and there it flies right there. Sometimes it happens when you're fighting for the extra yard or two. Lane. Yes, but the first thing that you must do is secure that football. There's some times where you get a shot, somebody hit you with the, with the headgear or something to pop loose, but they should never be able to pull it out of your, out of your grasp. From behind Steve Grogan, they give to Horace Ivory on the sweep. Inside the 40 and dragged down to the 38-yard line by Mike Kadish, 71. Kadish is an interesting story, Len, as you well know. The seven-year pro out of Notre Dame was very late, missed all of training camp, held out a contract dispute with the Bills, missed the first few games, and is really just now starting to get himself into shape. Well, that's a lot of yardage, well, isn't it? you can see that, you know, they can. They have so many people that can come after you. It isn't one man or two men, but they've got five men over over 300 yards rushing, including the quarterback. Cunningham just joined them today. Second down, Grogan. Throws it out here, and it's incomplete. Intended for Stanley Morgan, 86. 
Charlie Rome's had the coverage, and Rome's has probably been the most effective defensive uh, backfield man that Buffalo has had this year. Although, as Lenny pointed out to you earlier, this is the number one team against the pass in the AFC, ostensibly, people think, because you can run so well against Well, they it. do run so well. They're rushing for over 200 yards a game against Buffalo. And any team that, if you can establish that running game, brother, you can maintain possession of that or control of that line of scrimmage, and that's what you're trying to do every game that you're in. 11.45 to go, second quarter, 3 nothing Buffalo. Shockingly almost. Fumble in the middle. And I believe Grogan fell on it. I started to say, shockingly almost, only three points have been scored. Bill Lankaitis may have been guilty of a uh, legal procedure here. You know what that play was going to be? I have no idea. That was going to be the quarterback was going to follow that center, and Grogan was going to run with that football. That's why Lankaitis was getting out of there in such a hurry. <laughs> He's trying to get out of Grogan's way because there was going to be a running play. Not many quarterbacks are that, that fast and that great of runners that they can do it, but you just pointed out, Grogan is one of the five players in the brush for over 300 yards so far this year. Well, last Sunday, New England scored on their first seven possessions. Ooh. Gerald Wilson didn't punt until late in the ball game. Here's his first punt of the year. Old buddy of yours, Lendo. Well, his average is about 36 yards. You can see why he never kicked the ball until they're around midfield. Oh, he boomed one. Good high kick. Bounces at the 10. Back toward the New England goal line and stopped and killed at about the 13-yard line. So Wilson punches one out inside the 15. And the Buffalo Bills are 87 yards away from their first touchdown of the day. However, they lead 3-0 over New England. On behalf of Tony Green and the rest of the guys on the field, this is Sam Nova along with Len Dawson welcoming you back to Orchard Park, New York. Who do you think he's talking to there? Is he calling home, seeing what's for dinner? He'd probably like to, but uh, the priority is to talk to the defensive coach up in the box. And that's exactly what he was doing. First down, Buffalo at their own 14. Miller on the sweep. The Lavalier knocking some people out of there. Miller gets to about the 19-yard line for a gain of five, and Miller has run the sweep very well today. Well, now you just mentioned the reason why. Number 68, Joe DeLamalier. When you can get an offensive guard around the corner, that means that somebody has cut off the, uh, the pursuit and the, uh, the guy that's supposed to handle the outside, and that was number 81, Bob Chandler. Now, uh, he is a receiver, yes, but receivers are very instrumental in the running game because you've got to shut off that safety. Yard. Mel Lunsford, 70 oh, yeah. first man to him, and the ever-present yeah, Steve Nelson, five-year veteran out of North Dakota State. Yeah, Nelson made the tackle, but you just mentioned Mel Lunsford, number 72. He made the play. He turned it back into the linebacker, and that was okay. the reason that they stopped it. Surprise, surprise, out of Three Rivers, New Orleans, has gone on top of Pittsburgh. Archie Manning, five-yard touchdown pass to Rich Morty. 7-3, second quarter score. Steelers have been struggling the last couple of weeks. Third down and four now for Joe Ferguson and the Buffalo Bills. Throws it to Ruben Gant for the first down, 30-yard line. First reception of the day for his tight end. Dick Kahn is the man who made the stop, but Ferguson to Gant got him the first down. Well, that's good by uh, Joe right Ferguson. He's moving to pocket because it's a passing situation. Everybody in the house knows game. that, so you roll away from a lot of that pressure, and he's just looking to complete it for the first down, and that's what he did. Ah, moving the pocket, something Pat Hayden did not do against the Atlanta no, Falcons. No, and you can see night. what happened, particularly yeah. with all that blitzing, and what is happening here is the Patriots are faking that safety blitz. The passing situation. 9.09 to go, second quarter, the Bills clinging to a 3 nothing lead. They came into this game as 10-point underdogs. Curtis Brown holding his way to the 34-yard line. Good effort by Brown. Roland Hooks, 25. The Lamalier leading the way for him. Well, I tell you, Roland Hooks has got a job now. He is a running back, and he had to block on uh, Steve Zabel, a fine linebacker. Okay. Tried to do the job that time, but he didn't get it done. Steve Bartkowski has gone over from a yard out. Atlanta's taken a 7-3 lead over San Francisco. That's also a second-quarter score. Don't forget, at halftime, NFL 78. Scores and highlights of the other games that are available. Special features for you, too. 
ever wonder what would happen if the NFL had to go to the metric system? Play pass. Play action. Ferguson has a man. It's intercepted by Nelson. 40-yard line. 35. 30. Down at the 25. Steve Nelson. And we talked about him. His ability to take the football away. His fourth interception of the year. Well, that was a play action pass, and Ferguson is doing what Rogan did a while ago. He's following his man all over the field. He's looking for Chandler all the way and trying to force the ball in there. Now, there's one, two, three defensive men near that ball and one offensive man. Sometimes you get away with it. But a lot of times when you have linebackers with some quickness, like we have Steve Nelson, you're going to come up with an interception. So Grogan brings him out at the 25-yard line of Buffalo. Best field position the Patriots have had all day. Both wide receivers split right, and the give is to Morris Ivory for about three yards. Mike Kadish is the man who made the stop. Kadish joins Sherman White, D. Hardison, and Ben Williams up front. As I already told you, that's the fourth interception by Mr. Nelson this year to go along with four fumble recoveries, an opportunist to say the least. Well, you know, they had that play action pass on second down. First down is a down to do that because what's that linebacker doing back there 20 yards? If you do it on first down, he's not going to be that deep. Second down, six at the 21-yard line of Buffalo. Sweet Cunningham inside the 20 and down to the 19. Cunningham, boy, Cater is playing some football, isn't he? Well, you said he's just getting into the swing of things a minute ago. He got into the swing of things there. Great play by Mike Cadish, number tw or 71, coming from the inside. The defensive line and linebackers did a good job of shutting it off. They're making sure that he can't go wide. That's where he wants to go. Yeah, yeah, Here yeah. comes the pursuit. Number 71, Mike Cadish, that's what he's supposed to do. So Grogan has a very important third and four situation. A possession down, double tight end situation. Hasselbeck joins Russ Francis. Two huge tight ends. They give to Ivory outside. He's got blockers. 15. Cuts it to the 10. And a touchdown. Horace Ivory. 19 yards into the end zone, and the Patriots are on the board. Well, I'll tell you, speed is a great asset along with great linemen like 73 John Hanna out in front as you can see number 80 Hasselbeck doing a good job but 73 is out in front brother when you get an offensive lineman that far downfield you're going to make some yards and when you have a man with the speed of Horace Ivory not only going to get downfield but you're going to score a touchdown well, I don't know how much they paid Hanna and Gray but whatever they got they earned don't they Posey attempting to tack on the extra point it is Leonard Perkins so the Patriots waited a long time, but when they scored, they did it in very classy style, didn't they? David Posey set the ticket seat to keep Moody number 46 of Buffalo. New England having scored their first touchdown of the day. A short kick taken by one of the up linemen at the 30, the 37-yard line. That is Scott Hutchinson, a rookie defensive end for Florida. Not accustomed to having to run with the football. He thought that he was a running back the way he took off there. The number of plays, it only took three, which shows you cannot make mistakes because good teams take advantage of it. 25 yards, time elapsed just 1 minute and 25 seconds. 19-yard run by Horace Ivory for the touchdown. And so he can't make mistakes. Joe Ferguson should have thrown that ball away the last time. He put it under his arm and run away. So from the 37-yard line, the Bills with Ferguson at the helm. Gives it to Curtis Brown, cutting back for a hole. At the 43-yard line, it just dawned on me, Len, that Miami doesn't play until 4 o'clock this afternoon. This game is going into the entire southern area. I would surmise the Dolphins are watching this one with the... Uh, with great anticipation. Well, I, can, I can assure you that they're looking for a little bit of help. You're always looking for some help. Well, they're just a game behind the Patriots, and they got a toughie this afternoon with the Dallas Cowboys, and they're looking for some help from the guys in blue, the Buffalo Bills, who trail at the moment 7-3. Second down, four. Hooks on the sweep. Great second effort gets him the first down to the 48-yard line. Dick Kahn is the man who tried to throw him back, but rolling hooks like he did last okay. year in at Foxborough, having himself quite an afternoon. Well, I'll tell you, he did a good job of cutting back because Ruben Gant, as you can see right here, trying to block Zabel, 
and he's stringing it out. He's not letting him get outside. So what the back has to do, and a good back does it, he cuts off that block and goes back inside. And he does it good enough for a first down. They spot the ball at the 49-yard line of Buffalo. First down from the I formation. Miller is the second back. Sable has him and slows him down. Number 54, the nine-year veteran from Oklahoma, playing some great football and loving every minute of it. It would be a great pleasure for him to play on a good football team. Well, that's for sure. And he's playing for his old uh, his old coach, too, I believe, Chuck Fairbank, the coach at Oklahoma when when Zabo was playing. Then what about this New England team? They, they seem to uh, be a lot like the Los Angeles Rams. Great talent. Only made the playoffs once, but never been to the big one. Well, they have it. They are capable of, of winning it all. They have to put it together, and they're doing some of that this season because they've won some very close ball games. Flag is down. Brown gets about a yard at the absolute most. Like that. And the Patriots, who are superb against the run, now playing up to their abilities. Brown, Ray Sugar Bear Hamilton, 71, the nose tackle, is the man who made the stop. Well, Bill Ross, uh -huh. the umpire from Kansas City. Called that one up, and Heverling indicated to us it was holding against Buffalo. It'll be a 10-yard walk-off, and Ferguson will have second and a and a mile to go here. Well, there he's going to have to start thinking about putting the football up in the air. And when you do that, I mean, you take a look at the Patriots. They may be jumping around with the safeties up near the line of scrimmage, trying to confuse them. And perhaps what they should do, I'm talking about Buffalo, is come up and go on a kick, a quick count. Holding, Holding. Offense. offense number 61. Number 61. Second down. One great thing that you have to admire about the New England Patriots offensively is their balance. They rush for about 194 yards per game. They pass for 196. And they have the balance that almost every head coach strives for, Len. Well, that's what you're looking for, plus the fact that defensively they've got an outstanding defensive team. So they have all the ingredients. They put it together to go all the way, but so do a few other teams. Ray Costick, number 55, replaces Sam Hunt. Passing situation, second down, 19. But they don't pass. They give it off to Roland Hooks. Breaks the tackle, but he stopped at the 42-yard line. Ferguson trying to cross him up. Gave it to Hooks on the draw, and it went for maybe a yard or two. Well, you're, you, Sam, you're happened. not going to fool anybody from the I formation. The I formation is Those basically a running yard. formation. When you get into a split backs, that means that the backs can get out of that backfield in a hurry into the pass pattern. Maybe they're not the primary receiver, but they can move linebackers away from the primary receiver. But when you're in the I formation, those backs can't get out. The I formation primarily a running formation. As you saw the time of possession uh, quite even here in the first half. Three receivers in by and for Buffalo. Larry Walton, 49, joins Lewis and Chandler. Stepping up in the pocket. They got him. He got away. Looks downfield. Still can't find anybody. And goes down at the 46-yard line. He had Frank Lewis He also had Bob Chandler, number 81, waving his arms in the middle of the field. But let me tell you something, mister. When they've got all that beef surrounding you, you want to tear your head off, it kind of impairs your vision a little bit. Four-yard gain on the play. Take a look here. That he, he gets out of trouble down there. He's looking for help, believe me. He's looking for help. But there is a to go. Back live, Rusty Jackson will kick it from his 35. Good high spiral. He's got the wind at his back this time. Into the end zone. Stanley Morgan was the man back. We have a flag down in the neighborhood of the New England 35-yard line. And the initial indication is it's against Buffalo. Would you have him kick it again, Lynn, I guess? I would, yes, because it... Uh Chances are he's not going to put it out inside the 20. You got a man back there with an opportunity to run it back. But, but, you know, if you look at things uh, positively and aggressively, yeah, give me another shot at it. The guy had a great kick that time. Chances are he's not going to have another one. Let's listen to the call here from referee Chuck Everly. Illegal, Illegal man downfield, down field. field. number 41, fourth time. All right, let's quickly pause for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WBAL-TV, Baltimore 11. 3.04 to go in the first half. New England 7, Buffalo 3. With Len Dawson, I'm Sam Nover. And the Bills set to kick it deep to Stanley Morgan of the Patriots. 
Rusty Jackson now will kick it from his 30. I'll tell you why they want it over, because they have Stanley Morgan back there. If he gets any daylight whatsoever, he can move it. At his seven-yard line. 15, 20. Already they've benefited from the penalty. There's a flag down now at the 30-yard line as Morgan flag goes out, out of bounds field. on the far side flag of the field. Down. We got a clip on the play. So as it turns out, yards. as it turns out, they should have taken that last play. You know what's going to happen, Len? It's going to be probably at about the 18 when it's all over or so. 17 or 18 yard line and all this time has cost the New England Patriots about three yards in that yardage. Well, I tell you, you, you saw with the great ability of Stanley Morgan what he can do when he gets the football is why they wanted him to have the opportunity to get a hold of it with a little daylight. And he didn't have much, but he turned a little bit into about a 20 yard run. But maybe the reason he did it is because one of his teammates clipped the Buffalo Bills. Well, he did better than that. 14 yards. Clipping. Offense. Offense. Number 81. Number 81. Join the run. Ah, uh, shame First on you, Buck Francis. Did he say 81? He did say 81, as you can see what speed will do right here. Stanley's making his move. I don't believe he meant 81. I think he meant 80 with Rick Hasselbeck. I don't think Russ Francis is on the special team, and it looks like Hasselbeck gets somebody from behind. Nonetheless, the Patriots will put it in play from their own 14-yard line with 2.49 to play in the half. The preceding message was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League and NBC. That's Rich Stadium. We're in Orchard Park, New York, and we're delighted to have you with us in a 7-3 New England lead over Buffalo. The Patriots at their own 14 to Sam Cunningham. A yard, maybe two. Stopped by the center of the line. Randy McClanahan, the middle linebacker. Well, if you are concerned about Randy McClanahan, number 54, because he went out with an injury, he is well, because he really nailed Cunningham on it. And he's even smiling. He said, I like that, too. Let's do it again. Well, he got a big break when he came here... Uh, on waivers from the Oakland Raiders. Young man with a lot of potential and some good size. 6'5", 225, second year out of southwest Louisiana. Second down and eight for Grogan and company. Play action. Oh, I didn't fool Lucius Sanford, but he's still got a couple of yards and only because he is a skilled runner. You better believe it because number 57, Lucius Sanford, he was told, I'm telling you, before the game, look, this man can run with a football. He'll have those reverses, those naked reverses over there, so you stay at home he, until he goes the other way or make sure the play is going that way. Can you imagine Grogan the impression when he wheeled around to see Sanford waiting for him? We've hit the two-minute warning. We'll be back here in Orchard Park, New York, with the Bills and Patriots in just a minute. It's left in the first half. The New England Patriots lead the Buffalo Bills 7-3. They say there's no substitute for speed, Len. You can prove it with the stats on the day. Well, that's right. Terry Miller, Buffalo, has 45 yards rushing. He leads their ball club. And Ivory, 34 yards rushing. And one of those plays, a 19-yard touchdown run. Rogan, third down. Comes back with his pass and incomplete. Sanford had excellent coverage on Andy Johnson, the running back. And if the truth were known, Rogan should have never thrown it. Oh, no. It's not excellent coverage. It was like a blanket. They were one over there because uh, Johnson was there and the linebacker was just hanging, just waiting right there for the play like he knew what was going on. So the Bills will get the football back, presumably in excellent field position. It's just been called to our attention, Len, that Don Calhoun has not played a play this game and to our knowledge, nothing wrong with him at all. We hadn't heard that there's anything wrong with him. Lou Picone, 89, Keith Moody, 46, and twin safety. Kicking is Gerald Wilson. Fielded by Pacone, and he's down right there. An excellent special teams play by number 83, Don Westbrook, who was downfield under the punt, and Wilson was not a bad punt. So the Bills will have to start in their own territory at about the 41-yard line. Somebody else appreciated Westbrook's cover, too. I believe that Gerald Wilson did, because that wasn't the high-hanging kick. That was more of a line drive kick, but Westbrook, with that great speed, got under it. Well, NFL 78, we begin at 12.30 next Sunday afternoon. And uh, special on a young lady who has scored more touchdowns than any other pro player. You believe it? You'll have to see it. We'll have the rest of the lineup for you in a minute. At the 41 of Buffalo. Play action, Ferguson. Setting the screen up for Curtis Brown. Look at, flag is down. Breaks the 
Jackal still on his feet to midfield. 45, 40. Welcome back to our NFL 78 studios. Briefly, we'll bring you up to date on what the scores are right now. New Orleans against Pittsburgh. The Saints out in front of this one, 7-3. Franco Harris needs just three more yards to eclipse the 7,000 mark in his seventh year. Green Bay, Philadelphia, the Packers out in front, 7-3. That one in the second quarter. New England, Buffalo, the Patriots going for their seventh in a row, leading that one 7-3 over the Bills. Minnesota Vikings out in front of the Detroit Lions. That one is 3-0 in the second quarter. The Cardinals have taken a 14-0 lead over the Giants in St. Louis. Atlanta has a 7-3 lead, and Seattle out in front of the Bears, 7-0. That's our scores up to the moment. Let's go back to Soldier Field, Kurt Gowdy and John Brody. Back here in Orchard Park, New York, the Bills have it after the penalty. Dennis Johnson, number 39, replaces Curtis Brown. Miller gets the call, 35, at the 38-yard line. He's put down, he's put down very hard. Zabel, 54 at the bottom. People are getting anxious here because they've got just a minute and 15 seconds remaining in the half, and they're not going into their two-minute type offense. Well, I remember Buffalo and Houston game in Houston that I did earlier this season, and late in the game, Lynch, uh, Chuck Knox uh, was not very discriminant in use of the timeouts, and he's uh, letting it run down here. Well, I know I'll tell you why, man, because they've got about 12 yards to go before they get a first down. If they get a first down... It'll be the automatic first down with 45 seconds to play. Sugar Bear Hamilton and Claiborne made the stop on uh, Curtis Brown is running with more heart than you could ask a player to run. Well, with. He, he created, I guess, this, this penalty because he's running so hard. He's got the ball in the right hand away from trouble. And here he is. You can see that he's running. You can't, you can't grab people like this. You're grabbing them. you got to use the shoulder pad. Go down around the knees to bring those great runners down. So 45 seconds left in the half. New England continues to lead at 7-3. The Bills at least would like to get in the field goal range here for Dempsey. Well, now is when they better start using the two-minute offense. Chandler wide left, Frank Lewis to the right. How's that for a shot? Joe Ferguson. Buffalo didn't quite know, know what to do with the clock, and 15 seconds ran off. 
So they're down to 30 seconds before they finally realize they better stop the clock, but it didn't stop on an incompleted pass. It was just a reactionary thing for Ferguson, but what he should have done is look at it now, just back that ball down the ground and go for the next play. Now it's second down. All right, what would Len Dawson do? you got 30 seconds left. You're second and 15. You want to get it in field goal range. Who do you go to? They haven't gone to Frank Lewis all day. They haven't gone to, Lewis, they haven't gone to anybody. They haven't yeah, gone to Frank Lewis. They haven't gone to Reuben Gant. Gant they haven't gone won, to Chandler. Gant has one. Yeah, he picked up a, a, a pass and picked up a first down. But the linebackers, you know, they're either going to do one or two things. They're either coming after the quarterback or they're going to get good depth and drop. You're going to have to throw underneath them or in between them. You don't want to give me a play. Well, I would look for the, the tight end would be a, a man that I would be looking for. One setback, it's Curtis Brown. They slot. Hook. Marker is down was intended, I believe, for the tight end Reuben Gant. It was. But a marker is down at the Buffalo 40-yard line. And Buffalo, a little slovenly at the moment. Can't quite get the act together here. Well, they're in a situation where it's tough because they know that Patriots know they have to throw the football. And the thing that they'll do so well is just start and tee off because they're not worrying about a run. They disregard that completely. They're going after that quarterback. That's the time that the quarterback should be moving the pocket because they're geared to go rush the quarterback about nine yards deep right behind the offensive center. So the Bills continue to move backward. They spot the football now. <laughs> I don't think Heberling knows which direction he wants to go. The discussion is with 57 Steve Nelson. Nelson says, yes, referee, I do want to take the 10-yard walk-off. So they spot it on the 38. Illegal use, use of hands, number 61, and number 70. Offense. <laughs> take your pick. All right. Take your and pick. number 72. <laughs> Multiple choice. The whole offensive uh -huh. line. Well, it was actually Devlin and Parker, 70 and 61, respectively. Third down and 25, with 26 seconds left in the half. The last minute of this half is taken what seems an eternity. They're going to sit another play. Yeah, another marker is down. Miller goes out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Okay. Run out by Nelson and Tony McGee, 78. That'll be considerably shy of the first down. And the penalty against whom? Is separating Costick and Reuben Gant. Everling's had more air time than we have, hasn't he, Len? <laughs> Well, for a change, it's against New England. There's the time, too. You got 21 seconds remaining in the ball game. You got a long way to go to get a first down. You either throw a sure pass if you're going to throw it like a screen pass where you don't have to worry about an interception, or throw it. Throw it. Defense, Defense, number 54, number 54. Second, down. second down. Throw it deep so even if it's intercepted, with 20 seconds to go, the ball would be caught, you know, intercepting there. They've got a long way to go to score. I'm talking about the Patriots, even if they intercept it. And you got a shot at a big gainer. Zabel, the man offside. At the 44-yard line of Buffalo. Ferguson try to move him into field goal range. He needs a big play. Elects to go for the run again. Roland Hooks. It's back to the line of scrimmage and nothing more. So the Bills, much to the dismay of the partisan crowd here at Rich Stadium, content to run the clock down. Rod Schultz, the linebacker, is the man who made the stop, and the Patriots get a timeout here. Well, With eight Buffalo. seconds to go, they want the football Buffalo, back. Buffalo took that timeout. Eight seconds remain. Now what they can do, they got one more shot. They have no timeouts left, so they might as well put that ball up in the air, and the two things can happen. A lot of things can happen, but for Buffalo, they could either complete the pass and maybe score, or it could be interference on the Patriots. Even if it's intercepted, it's no, no big deal because with eight seconds to go, Patriots wouldn't have an opportunity to go back and score. Chuck Knox conferring on the sidelines with his quarterback, Joe Ferguson, who has completed but two of six passes on the day. Is that right? Two of six. Not what you would call your uh, premier performance. They don't have anything going. You know, nothing has been established. Didn't get the running game going, really. And the penalties have hurt them. He's thrown an interception. I'm sure he's reluctant to, to throw in the middle. But here's an opportunity. That's a free shot. 
Eight seconds to go. Put it up in the air. Let her go deep. Keep both backs in the block to give yourself maximum protection. You take a shot at it. And that halftime is when they make these all important adjustments. If you were Chuck Fairbanks, what would you be thinking in terms of? Well, they haven't exactly been burning up the scoreboard themselves, leading 7 3. Well, they're lucky to be seven because they got that on a on a break, an interception, and took advantage of it. You got to tell them, we got to establish the line of scrimmage. Hey, we're a team that we're number one in rushing, and they're the last team in uh, against the rush. Let's run against them. This could very well be the last play of the half. From the 44 of Buffalo, Ferguson. Oh, Throw it and pray kind of play. Out of bounds intended for Frank Lewis. Well, Ferguson is screaming mad over on the far side. He's taking his helmet off, in fact. Dick Kahn had the coverage. I have no idea what he's angry about, Len, unless his receiver was knocked down. Well, he may have, he may have thought that his receiver was bumped. You're allowed that bump in, in, with five yards in that within that line of scrimmage, but after that, it's no unless you're going after the ball. But also that pass, was, it was, he threw it out of bounds. Uh, so even if the receiver caught it, he had been four yards out of bounds to make the reception. Well, you couldn't tell by his performance today, but Joe Ferguson actually has had more success against the New England Patriots than any other team in the NFL. In nine games against him, he's thrown 13 touchdown passes. Take a look at that second area of uh, the Patriots. See Miller on the sweep to midfield, fumbles the ball. As the clock runs out, it goes out of bounds. Nobody particularly happy with the ending of the first half. The Patriots lead at 7-3. This time, this time, it's going to be the Patriots receiving the kickoff in the second half. You're taking a look at the stats. Not very impressive in the first half. Both of them had six first downs rushing, but passing-wise, there's been nothing for the Buffalo Bills, just four yards passing in the first half. They have to improve on that. They're not going to be able to run against this Patriot team all afternoon. They're going to have to put the ball in the air in, in order to move it and to score some points. I can't believe it. The Bills have out to, have out offensed the Patriots in the first half, but this way New England's going to have to gain something like 300 yards in the second half. They're capable of it, however. At the eight-yard line, Morgan to about the 23 and caught there and brought down. Charlie Rooms, 26, is one of the men who made the stop. Schweitzer on the stop. Schweitzer was there, as was number 52, Doug Becker, former Notre Dame linebacker who was activated just a couple of weeks ago as a free agent. And so the Patriots will put it in play as we begin play here in the second half. New England leading Buffalo 7-3. The 23-yard line is a line of scrimmage. Let us see what Mr. Grogan has in store this half. Well, I think he probably has been told, let's go back to what we're going to do the best, or what we've been doing the best all year, and that's run with the football. And he does just that. Cunningham through a big hole to the 30-yard line. Cunningham carry stop by, stop by 59. Shane Nelson, Randy McClanahan, 54. But not before he picks up seven yards on first down. That is a win on first down. I might add too. Let's uh, let's run over John Hanna because he seems to be able to move people out of the way. Offense is uh, identical to the one that started the game. Ivory and Cunningham in the backfield with Grogan. Now they take Jackson out and put Don Westbrook in at one wide right receiver. He's number 83. Morgan is the other 86. Ivory waiting for the blocking. Cuts back, gets the first down. Morris Ivory, five Buffalo Bills seemed to have him hemmed in, but he got the first down. Well, they were stringing this play out. Number 70, Gray, number 73 is Hannah, and they are moving people. That's what I was talking about a second ago. Go to the left side because those big offensive linemen do a job of moving people. But number 22, the defensive back safety man, Steve Freeman, really did a good job of making sure Ivory didn't get outside. Because he's gotten outside, it might have been all over. So it's first down at the 34-yard line. Andy Johnson, 32, joins Cunningham in the backfield. The messenger backs to Chuck Fairbanks. Cunningham, good block right through the middle. Look at that, almost to midfield. Cunningham, Gary. The official kind of got run over also. And I believe he's, he's hurting a little bit because oh, he, he really is. got his, his back and his knee twisted around. Bill Ross, the umpire, number 68, who is down. He's in a tough position. This is the second time this year that I've been broadcasting games that he's been doing that he has been down. He's in a very vulnerable position. You know, he has no padding on there. And he's looking for holding, and he's right behind the offensive or defensive line. And you can see there's a lot of big people there. Cunningham on a good block. 
by Bill Incantis, the offensive center. As you can see here, the official taking a look. He has to get out of the way, but he doesn't. You can see the look like his knee. Steve Freeman is a man who came over to make the tackle, and both Freeman and Cunningham went into the umpire, Bill Ross, who is, as you can see now, just uh, sitting up a little bit. He is still down at the 47-yard line of New England. I know what he feels like. Oh, so do I. Oh, boy. Bill was a fine basketball player at the University of Missouri. As a matter of fact, I played against him when I was in college. I know he can jump. He didn't jump far enough that time to get out of the way. <laughs> but he's going to gut it out, he said. Well, look, look at that. All right. Yeah, Sherman White, White gets him an old pat on the back. Hang in there. Hang yes, in there. We all got to play in pain. Well, they spot it now at the 46-yard line. Actually, Cunningham ran up Mr. Ross's back at about the 48, but they say he was down at the 46. First down to England. They are tearing gigantic holes in the center of that Buffalo line now. Cunningham with nowhere but daylight. 30-yard line, out of bounds at the 25. Well, they did something a little different there, Leonard. Oh, yes, sir. That was an outstanding play by the, uh, the, offensive, the whole offensive unit of the, of the Patriots. Faking looked like it was a counter play. You can see Horace Ivory going one way, and they wanted the defense to think that, and they did. Out in front, you can see number 86 is uh, Stanley Morgan getting out front, giving a block to Cunningham, and number 74, Shelby Jordan, trying to get out in front of Cunningham, but making sure that he didn't flip anybody. That, big jo play. that Jordan, speaking of big, is really a big specimen. 6'7", 260, they tell us he may someday play at 290 and not lose any speed. Cunningham again, inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. Lucian Cantor throws it back with an assist from Charlie Rones. But Cunningham is really eating up the, uh, the turf here at Rich Stadium in Buffalo. Second half, where have they gone? They've either gone up the middle or to the left side. They, they said that, I'm sure, in the locker room, gentlemen. This is what we're going to do. There's not going to be anything fancy the second half. We're going to go out and attack this Buffalo defense. Probably Fairbanks said, gentlemen, start your engines, and that's exactly what they've done. They have really rolled. Calhoun makes his first appearance in the game, number 44. He replaces Cunningham. The Steelers have gone on top of New Orleans, 10 to 7. Terry Bradshaw to Lynn Swan. Look at this. Horace Ivory to the six-yard line. It'll be first down and goal to goal to England. They have really ripped some yardage off. I'll tell you, number 73, John Hanna, can you imagine being a defensive back and looking at this big train coming at you? Number 73, and he gets clear because that means there's excellent blocking. There he is out in front. Now, you, I'll assure you, the defensive back, when he gets hit by 73, he's backing up. 78, Scott Hutchinson, 75, Dennis Johnson come into the Buffalo lineup to beef up that front line. First down and goal, they spotted at the five and a half yard line. Ivory again, outside, touchdown, Horace Ivory. Isn't he dandy? His second of the day. They had three tight ends in the ball game that time, Russ Francis. Don Hazelbeck both on the same side, and they had Brock, an offensive lineman, on the other side. But this is really great running by number 23, Horace Ivory. He's just gliding along, waiting for his lineman to do the job for him. And then he sees that he can't get outside, cutting back in. And you can't, you know, that's a great move because all the defensive back can do is just what, what Rooms did, number 26, is try to oh, grab him. You're not going to bring Ivory down with the arm tackle. David Posey will attempt to make it 14 to 3. Dick Kahn will hold. The kick is up. It is perfect. So the Patriots have wasted no time in asserting themselves here in the second half. They march downfield with their first possession. Put seven up on the board. Lead it 14 to 3. We'll be back in a moment. We gained 56 yards in that New England drive with Ivory covering the last five for the touchdown. Here's Posey's kick. Line drive. Dennis Johnson, 30, 35, almost to the 40-yard line. So Buffalo 
needing desperately now to get back in a hurry to assert themselves in the second half to show New England that while they can drive the ball downfield, Len, so can Buffalo. Here's well, that scoring drive. That's their seven plays, 76 yards, three minutes and 31 seconds. But what they did, the Patriots, they decided at halftime, I'm sure, gentlemen, were going to the left side. They were running in. Tighten up that chin strap because you're going to get the football. They scored going to the right, but it was Cunningham that got them down there. Miller and Curtis Brown are the running backs. Chandler in motion. Joe Ferguson has gone all the way at quarterback. The sweep for Miller. Nothing doing. Look at that great pursuit. Sam Hunt coming all the way over from the right inside linebacker position to make the stop on a sweep around the other side. Well, I'm sure that the folks can hear what is going on in the stadium here, that uh, they're not happy with the play selection, I'm sure, of the Buffalo Bills. But the Bills, this, you know, they can't afford to turn the ball over right now. now. There are a lot of plays that you can play that are conservative plays, but you can still be aggressive. I'm talking about screen passes. Passing to the backs in the flat. Make those linebackers cover. Ferguson's wide receivers have not caught a pass today, namely Chandler and Lewis. Stepping up in the pocket. He's got people open. There's Frank Lewis at the 48. And a first down in New England territory. Well, all you got to do is mention it, Len, and you know you break a streak. Well, I tell you, they know that they can't go back in the pocket and throw it. So he moved out. This was designed, and he's looking all the way, throwing it low to to Frank Lewis, and if you're going to throw that pass, and it's going to be off the target, which that was a little bit, you better be low and not high, because the low one you can catch, and if you don't catch it, the defense won't get it. Stop made by Steve Zabel. First down, Buffalo at the New England 48. You notice how the attitude of the fans changed in a hurry when they completed the pass on <laughs> first down? Ah, uh, they're just like fans all over America, uh, aren't they? Yeah. 14-3, to 3, the Patriots in command, and the Bills try to drive the football. The screen now to Curtis Brown. Flag else that I can think of. He is not particularly big. 5'10", 203, second year out of Missouri, but runs with absolute reckless abandon and the penalty is against Buffalo. Well, here again, you know, the guy's coming up, the man's coming up with a great play. You can't, what Buffalo cannot afford to do is what they just got through doing. Because for two, two things it does, it takes away that great run, but it's demoralizing to the offensive unit. And those are plays that, that Ineligible receiver, Don Field, number 70, offense. Uh, he should know better than that. Joe Devlin's a third-year man out of Iowa, and he should know better. Well, that's, that was a screen pass, and the, the linemen are taught to hold for so many counts before they take off downfield. It could have been that maybe the, the screen took a little longer to develop, but it didn't look that way. I think maybe Joe just got a little anxious. I'm quick to point a figure, finger, and you're quick to defend, huh? We make a heck of a combination, Dawson. First down in 20 now, back at the Buffalo 42-yard line. A little out pattern to Lewis, right where he caught his last one at the 48-yard line of New England. Basketball so they get the ball back to the line of scrimmage. They make up the uh, yardage that they were penalized. Zabel again making the stop. He's taking the, those are safe passes because he's thrown well over the outside, and if his man, Lewis, doesn't catch the ball, his ball will be going out of bounds. He's not throwing it in the middle because the last time that he was throwing in the middle in the first half, they come up with an interception. Second down 11, they spotted on the New England 49-yard line. But he hasn't got deep, you know, they, and you have to throw deep, even if it's not complete, to get those defensive backs off of him. See if we can't talk him into it once. Straight back out of a pro set. Looking, can't find anybody. Now Ferguson running. Throws it. Curtis Brown couldn't handle it. Just as well because uh, the coverage was there by Mike Haynes. Of course, Sugar Bear Hamilton was bearing down on Ferguson, and he really had no choice but to get rid of it. It'll be third down 11. That was a good play by Joe. You know, he was getting chased out of the pocket. And you're better off instead of trying to throw it up for grabs to throw the ball away and come back for the next play. Len, in our pregame show, we talked about character. That Chuck Knox implored his ball club this week that it's the most important game they'll play all year. Do these guys look like they're playing the most important game? Well, I don't know about the kickoff. Looked like that they were very aggressive. The opening kickoff, that tells you a lot about a football team. Well, the referee, Chuck Heberling, is trying to tell us something. I believe Buffalo has called a timeout, or is it the 30-second clock that is 
Yep. They're experiencing difficulty with the 30-second clock. It is the latter. The 30-second clock is giving them difficulty. You can see it flickering on the left. Now it's going berserk. <laughs> Well, that's not the one that Ferguson is looking to, however. The one behind the New England goalpost is working just fine, thank you. It's the one at the other end of the field. And so it's Brogan who'll have to contend with it here in the third quarter. So don't charge Buffalo with a timeout. Ferguson, passing stats not very good on the day. He hasn't thrown it up much, but he will now on third down and long. Look out. He's got a man. And he threw it in behind him. He tried to get it to Chandler. And he got it away just at the nick of time because Ray Hamilton put Mr. Ferguson on his backside. And not so nicely. Well, McCray is in the ball game. That's the first time I believe he's played in several weeks. He's healthy enough to play. Joe also on that particular play should have thrown that one away because it could very easily come up an interception. Ferguson is 56% completion uh, percentage on the year, but he's way below that today. Four out of 11. Stanley Morgan in single safety at the New England 10-yard line. Rusty Jackson will kick it from his own 40. 8.50 to go, third quarter. He shanked that one. At about the 14-yard line. Well, it traveled farther than I originally Morgan thought it would. Well, he got, he got it, it down, and Morgan fair, fair caught the ball. He got the wind blowing that way, so that, that's the fact that yeah. we got one of those yellow things down again. And it's again Buffalo again. By my count, Len, that's the ninth penalty against the Bills here in a little over one half. And by contrast, New England has been penalized only four times. Well, that's concentration. Things like that, that is concentration. Those are correctable mistakes. And they're giving them just, that, was, that punt wasn't that spectacular, but it was inside the 20-yard line. So that meant that Patriots would have had to march, what, close to 82 Ineligible yards. Ineligible man downfield. Number 53, offense. Will Grant, number 53, was not supposed to be downfield, but he was. And the partisans here in Orchard Park are starting to lose their patience just a bit with all the mistakes that the Bills are making. The fact of the matter is they are not out of this football game. They're trailing 14 to 3. Morgan now standing at the 10-yard line. Jackson will kick it from his own 35. Not a very good kick at all. Unless it gets a bounce, and it does. Look at it does. They kill it in the two. Two-yard line. Well, that was closer to his head, Sam, but he got a great bounce. On the two-yard line. Number 23, Steve Powell is the man of the moment as he killed the ball at the two-yard line. And when we come back, the Wings will have it from there first down. Things have not been going well for Buffalo, but Rusty Jackson scooping up it like a shortstop kicks it. And take a look at when you say it's a good hometown bounce. That ball is bouncing straight toward the goal, bouncing high in the air, giving Steve Powell an opportunity to take it out on the two-yard line. That means now it's 98 yards away for the Patriots, giving the Buffalo Bills a pretty good chance right now. Yeah, Len, you notice how our director, Harry Coyle, and our producer, Larry Cirillo, weave their magic. How'd you like that for camera placement? almost bounced into our lens. First down, Calhoun wedging his way out to the five-yard line. The Buffalo fans imploring their defense to play some defense here and keep the Patriots hemmed in. Well, that time they hit that time. I'm talking about the Buffalo Bills. Lucius Sanford, number 57, did a good job of coming on and meeting the play. Now, they went right back to their strength, or what they feel their strength is, is to the left side. That's Leon Gray and John Hanna with the fullback running in there. They want to try to get out of trouble. Now, if Buffalo right now is a beautiful opportunity for them to come up defensively, and if they can hold, they could get great field position. Rogan to pass. Quick out. Morgan at the 15. Breaks the tackle to the 20, 25-yard line. And Sanford throws him out of bounds, but that got him out of trouble in a hurry and an excellent call by Grogan. Yes, it was. It wasn't that great a pass, but it was a it was a great call. A quick out. He knows that the defense is going to look to stop the run. He throws the ball. He throws it behind him. That's not the place to throw it. But good catch by number 86, that's Stanley Morgan, and good thing they caught up with him because if he got some daylight, he'd have been gone. So Grogan has a little room to breathe and work with now at his own 24-yard line. 
Seven minutes and 50 seconds to play third quarter. The Patriots have owned the third quarter. They lead it 14 to three. Bills trying to stiffen their backs a little bit here and get the ball back. Calhoun. Breaks the tackle at the 30, 35, and he's got the first down. Don Calhoun running with the football. And Freeman brought him down, but again, it was a counter play. That was just Break like down. the play that they scored in the first drive with number 39, Sam Cunningham, running it to the left side. They just turned it around and showed the other side of the defensive line of the Buffalo Bills what that play was all about. Both of them working very successfully. Bill Grogan making first downs here to the Buffalo 36-yard line. First down to the 36. And the clock continues to move. Morgan goes wide right. Double tight end situation. They're making it obvious here, Len. They're going to run with the ball, and they're getting all the blocking they can get. Ivory on the sweep. 40, 45, carries a man, namely Charlie Rooms, to the 45-yard line. You, you talk about manpower. You're talking about the double tight, you know, Hasselbeck and uh, number 81, Russ Francis. And Francis is a great blocker, and they say that he's making Hasselbeck a great blocker also but they're going to the left side over there where they figure their bread and butter is philadelphia mickemeyer 27 yard field goal they lead green bay now by a score of 10 to 3. and the bears keep coming back three field goals by bob thomas 14 to 9 seattle that game's in the third quarter we are 14 to 3 new england over buffalo len dawson and sam nover delighted to bring it your way here on nbc grogan play action Home run for Harold Jackson. Tipped away beautifully in the last minute. I said Jackson. It was Carlos Pennywell, number 88, the rookie, out of Grambling. Well, he had about a half a step. It was a good defensive play, but Mr. Grogan didn't see number 81, Russ Francis. He was open, but he upped it all the way. Now, there's a step, and really a fine play by Charles Rome. But had that ball been thrown a little bit further, Carlos Pennywell would have had a touchdown. As you wish. This is the biomaterial on Mr. Rome's. And as I said earlier in the ball game, he has been the most consistent defensive back the Bills have had all year. Now, Lenz mentioned a couple of times to you that Buffalo is number one against the pass. Uh, we we kind of been cheap shotting them by saying, well, anybody who gives up 300 plus yards against the run, he, you know, got to be good against the pass. But they do play the pass. Well, they do. Way. When the ball is in the air, they've done this afternoon. They've done a great job of of going after the football. A couple of plays have really been outstanding plays by the defensive backs of the Buffalo Bills. Calhoun trying to get the first down. They may call for a measurement. Here's a second quarter score. Kenny Stabler to Raymond Chester, four yards. Oakland leads Len Dawson's Kansas City Chiefs 7-0. They're not my team anymore. I'm retired. <laughs> when did you disown them? <laughs> I didn't disown them. <laughs> You'd like him to be yours, wouldn't you? Well, I'd like any of these. Uh, I'd like to own them. Well, it's obvious that uh, New England's a little shy of the first down. So on third down, Cunningham and Andy Johnson make up the backfield. I beg your pardon, fourth down. They are going for it on fourth down in their own territory, leading 14 to 3. Fairbank shows me something. I don't know what, but he shows me something. <laughs> well, he's got three tight ends in there, including number... 58 is Pete Brock. First down, Cunningham. Getting to the 47-yard line. First down. Who else but Sam Bam when you need a yard or so? And he got it with plenty to spare. McClanahan is the man who made the stop on him. It's pretty difficult to stop that man for a half a yard. He's got 85 yards rushing so far. He was the one of the backs that hadn't had not rushed for 300 yards so far, and he probably said, wait a minute, I deserve to be up there too. But you can see the power that he has. And he grabs that ball with both hands. He was going to make sure no one's going to strip him of the football. Ivory has 63 yards rushing. Cunningham, as you saw, 85. This is Calhoun. Ooh, he almost lost the football in midfield. It popped out of his hands, and he grabbed it. Gained about a yard. Freeman, 22. Shane Nelson, 59. And Kadish gets off the bottom. He has played himself quite a football game, Mike Kadish. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WBAL-TV, Baltimore 11. With Lenny Dawson, Sam Nover, back at Rich Stadium, Orchard Park, New York. 4.43 to go third quarter on a moving clock. The Patriots leading the Bills 14-3. The 
Bills hoping that history could repeat itself this afternoon. They beat New England on this weekend last year. But so far, not today. Incomplete. McClanahan had the coverage. The pass was intended for Morgan, Len. Yeah, and once again, it was number 26, Charles Romes, who made a real fine play coming up deep, and he got a hand on the ball to knock it down. Now, what happened with the Buffalo Bills on first down, I think, was really a good play because they gambled, and they had their middle linebacker, Randy McClanahan, coming on the play. They stopped them, so they're forcing. What they have to do is force the Patriots into a passing situation. Patriots are out there with two tight ends telling you right now, hey, we're going to run the football. And if you let them get away with that, that's what they're going to do. You see Calhoun go off on the top of your screen. Johnson and Cunningham in the pro set. Rogan third down and eight. The Bills again leading the face up to a big defensive play. Over the middle, he's got Johnson. And he's close to the first down. 29 is Mario Clark. McClanahan, 54, was also there, and he is very, very close to a New England first down. I would have to imagine, Len, even if he doesn't have it, if Fairbanks would gamble in his own territory, he certainly would gamble at the Buffalo 42. Yeah, yes, you would surely think yeah. so. And yes, I know. You look at the, the number of weapons right, that the Patriots the have. Line. Now, they have uh, Russ Francis tied in. They've got two fine, speedy wide receivers. And when you start worrying about those people, he has Andy Johnson, the bread and butter man, that on third down situations he loves to go to. Len, let me ask you, uh, Mario Clark is still down on the field, as you can see, but while we're talking about Fairbanks, how do you feel about his philosophy in that Grogan had played 30 straight ball games every play of those 30 games before last Sunday when Tom Owen finally got some work? Well, you know, I the thing that, that, that I would think about is a couple of weeks ago against Cincinnati, Grogan had an injured hand. It was all puffed up. He couldn't take a snap from center until about a half hour before game time. He took the snap. He said, well, I can do it. In the meantime, you know, Tom Owens did all the work during the week, and he didn't get to play. And I'm, part of the thinking, I'm sure, of Chuck Fairbanks is he didn't want to just destroy the confidence of Steve Grogan. But on the other hand, what about Tom Owen? What are you doing to his confidence? He, uh, he knows he's a backup quarterback. He had an excellent preseason, didn't he? He had a better preseason than Steve Grogan. And my feeling is that you have the man there. If he isn't capable of playing, you know, when the other man is really hurt, find somebody else. Okay, fourth down. Less than a yard to go. Eddie McMillan replaces the injured Mario Clark. Grogan sneaking for the first down. I don't know. It would appear on his first thrust he got it, and he did. Yeah. Everling indicates, the referee, that he got it. So the Patriots uh, elect to have their quarterback keep the football, and Grogan has all sorts of talent when it comes to running the ball. Well, he can do it. You know, he's tall. He's six feet four, and that might be the difference between him making that first down and not. Let's check a few more scores. The Steelers have gotten a field goal 21 yards out of Roy Jarella. They lead 13-7 to over New Orleans, third quarter. Minnesota has gone on top, Tarkin into Sammy White, 10 to 7 over the Lions. And the Giants have gotten on the board at Joe Danello field goal, 20 to 3. The Cardinals well on their way to their second straight win. Rogan, the home run ball down the right sideline and knocked down. Clark came back in the ball game. It was intended for who was that? Harold Jackson running down the right sidelines, I believe. No, it was Stanley Morgan, number 86. But here it is, he had double tight in there looking like he was going to run the football and it's up over top. Man-to-man -to -man coverage and it's a really an outstanding play running side by side by number 21, Mario Clark. Well, uh, Mr. Morgan came back and appealed to the official wanting an interference call, but he did not get it. 3-12 to play third quarter. And Grogan using the first down situation to go for all the marbles there and try to break this one wide yeah, open. That's, that's a good play because, you know, once in a while that's going to hit because they've been going very well on first down running with the football. Now he gets off to Ivory. Picking up a quick five. Sanford finally tackles him. Lucius has had a nice ball game today. He's a rookie out of Georgia Tech. Right side linebacker at 6'2", 217. So it'll be a gain of about five on the carry maybe closer to six third down and four and grogan's been great in third down conversions len but sam i'll tell you he's got he should look at this as uh, two downs to make the yardage because they've been going on fourth down the last two times inside that area so he can run with the football right now run with it and maybe pick up the first down now five defensive backs for the bills marvin schweitzer they keep it on the ground to andy johnson 
sweeping, getting the first down. A flag is down. Johnson down the far sideline. Tackled inside the 20. Andy Johnson needing five, picking up about 20 on the carry. But a marker is down, and it's against New England. Well, I said that they had two downs to get the first down, and they could run with the football because, you know, if they didn't make it, if they say they made two yards on that down, they come up, and they're in fourth down. They go for it once again rather than kick a field goal. But the one thing they didn't want was what this referee's going holding, to tell you. Holding, holding, offense, offense, number, 61, number 61, third down. Third down. Sam Adams, the eight-year veteran out of Prairie View. I don't know if I'd want uh, those announcements being uh, instituted <laughs> if I was the lineman. Well, he is the uh, the offensive right guard, but number 73 right there is uh, Big John Hanna. Now, he is a, he's a truck out there. When you get an offensive guard out like that that loves to hit people, you've got a running game going. Third down and 14. Let's see what Grogan does now. He splits Jackson wide left and Morgan to the right. He escapes the rush. Throws it downfield, intending it for Jackson, and a high in the air, and it's out of bounds. Deflected off Jackson. I think he came back and made, or Morgan, I keep calling Morgan Jackson, and I beg your pardon, but he was Stanley who came back for it and got a hand on it. Russ Francis was also in the area there. What Grogan was doing, this is third down in long yardage situation. They're not going to go fourth down in this situation. He doesn't think he can run for it, so he puts it up in the air. A couple of things can happen. Maybe somebody will come up with a great catch. Even if it's intercepted, they're down near their goal line. Well, just as I suspected, Morgan made a neat move to come back after it and did get his hand on the football. Gerald Wilson back will kick it from his 40-yard line. In single safety is Keith Moody, number 46 for Buffalo. Bad snap, Wilson. Oh, he dropped the ball! And they got him back at the 40-yard line. Well, the fact of the matter is, Gerald Wilson almost made a magnificent play. Well, I've seen him do that so many times. He did make the, the catch. And if, and if you watch Gerald Wilson, he goes down after the ball. He knows it's a bad snap. He's got to catch it first. He caught it, but the old hands are gone. It must have been a slippery ball. Otherwise, he would have gotten the ball off. The old Notre Damer, Doug Becker, is the man who put him down for the Patriots with superb field position. Have a chance to get back in the game. Who have just tackled punter Gerald Wilson at the 40-yard line. With a chance now to get back in the football game. They trail 14 to 3. Joe Ferguson. Curtis Brown and Roland Hooks are his setbacks. Play action. Looking downfield now, he's got a scramble. At the 40, 35. Down at the 30 yard line, and he may have gotten the first down. Good play by Joe Ferguson. The one thing I would say when he was running with that ball hanging down around his knees, he should have put it away once that he got moving. He took a shot from Sam Hunt, number 50, but he knew that was coming. Got as much yardage as he could get, and then go on down. Play. Here's a play-action pass, which is replay. good on first down, because you get an opportunity to get somebody deep. He was looking deep. No one was open. Now, you can't see it in the picture right now, but Chandler was waving at him, coming back toward the quarterback. They put the ball away now, because you know you're going to take a lick. The Lavalier, good block on Greg Shaw, coming back on the uh, scramble by Ferguson. Now he gives to Curtis Brown. Second down and less than a yard, and Brown gets the first down. Curtis tumbling Brown, to the 28-yard line. Sam Hunt, number 50, and Mel Lunsford, number 72. And while uh, I'm thinking about it, our thanks again today, as usual, to the excellent crew up here in Buffalo, the outstanding camera work, and the folks that uh, allow Len and I to have the flexibility to tell you what's going on. Our spotters, George Crossan and uh, Walter Sterner, and our statistician, Ray Hemke. As usual, here in Buffalo, they have a great crew, man. Yes, they do. They know their football up there. Football too, so I say that. First down and 10. 27-yard line at New England. Quick out. Frank Lewis trying to get away from the defensive back, Raymond Claiborne. No, sir, says Mr. Claiborne. Short yardage gain as we're running out of time here in the third quarter. The clock down to 20 seconds. Quick out pass, but the ball was not thrown out in front. He had to turn around. Had the ball been on the other side, he would have been able to turn upfield and get that, lower that shoulder and maybe break a tackle. If anything, you'd have gained more yards. But the ball's got to be out in front. The one place you don't want to throw it is where he threw it. No, the gun will sound before we get off another play in the third quarter. 
Second down, six. Ferguson is in scoring range. And the Bills are trying desperately to get back in the football game. It's 14 to 3. New England will be back in a moment. Austin Sam Nover back at Rich Stadium, Orchard Park, New York. I don't believe that 29 yards passing line. Well, I'll tell you, they only had four yards in passing the first half. This is supposed to be a fairly good offensive machine. But they have not really got it on track today. Roland Hook off his own left tackle, picking up some nice yardage. Well, that was a big play because now if they didn't make the first down, they've got two shots to make it. But it looks like they did. They're they moving got the chain, so it's first down. On a second down and six, Hooks picks up the first down. So the Bills now as deep as they've been all afternoon at the New England 17-yard line. Ferguson has not thrown a pass complete to Bob Chandler, who has caught more passes than any man in the National Football League over the last three and a half years, Len. 81 is his number, Mr. Chandler. You might suspect that Ferguson would look for him now. Over the middle, he's got Gant at the eight-yard line. His tight end, Reuben Gant. Stopped by Tim Fox for free safety. Well, what's happening now in this last drive is that Ferguson on first down has been throwing the football. And he's been very successful. Here it is, play-action pass. He's rolling. It's a bootleg play. And Gant Here's the replay. coming from the lower part of your screen on over. Throws it in there, hits him in the stomach. He shouldn't be leaving his feet to catch the football, though. That's a, you know, something that you don't do because when your feet are in the air, you cannot run until they get back on the ground. If you catch it in your hands, you just keep on moving. First down, you see the sticks were brought in for the official measurement. So the Bills have it first down in goal at the New England seven-yard line. It's 14 to three, New England. Plenty of time to go the entire fourth quarter. But they're 11 points down. And so they, they definitely want a touchdown on this on this particular drive. And the Bills go to the double tight end. Fran Koviak, number 84, replaces Frank Lewis. So Gant, 88, Fran Koviak, 84, the tight end. Terry Miller just coming into your picture, they number better, 40. They got nine seconds on that 30-second clock. They better get moving or call a timeout or they could be in trouble. They're down to two. They got it off. Curtis Brown cutting back at the five-yard line. Fumble, and I believe New England has come up with it. They have indeed. Curtis Brown tossed it up at the five-yard line, and it looks like Steve Zabel is the man who made the recovery. That's one of the that's one of the things that can happen when you take your time and you rush things at the end. You don't run the play the way that you would like to. Well, they messed it up when they got down deep, didn't they? We'll be back here in Buffalo in just a minute. The Patriots still leading by 11. We're going to give you that address again in uh, just a while, so get a pencil and paper, if you will, and you'll be able to write it down. We'll wait a play or two, but, Len, that's, uh, that's a very unfortunate thing that's happened to Buffalo. Well, I'll tell you, Don, I don't understand the reason behind it. The plays are coming from the bench, and they're shuffling people back and forth. And one area that you've got to be precise is down near the goal line. That's where you score the Go from the seven-yard line. And it's the sweep to Ivory. Look at this at the 25, trying to cut it back. Still got additional yardage. A great effort by Horace Ivory. Steve Freeman finally knocked him out of bounds, but when Ivory saw he was hemmed in, he just came to a stop. Right, that's what he should do. Let the pursuit overrun in. Try to find a little alley someplace. This is the old uh, crossbuck series. Faking to the fullback, the guard pulling out in front. 61 is Sam Adams in number 73. I've been mentioning him all afternoon. And when you get a guard, and I'll say it again, downfield that far, you're going to get great yardage. But you see Horace Iver using great running ability. Let the defensive men run by him. He picked up about an additional five or six or seven yards with that move. Yeah, yards for the afternoon is Horace Ivory. And to give to Calhoun, breaking a tackle to the 38-yard line. And it is not altogether out of uh, the question that Buffalo's defense is a bit demoralized after seeing the offense fail to get any points out of that Well, and uh, when you get that close, you at least have to give yourself an opportunity to get the points. By that, I mean at least try to kick a field goal. You might miss it. But at least give yourself an opportunity. The one thing you don't want to do is cough up that football by the end zone, by a fumble or an interception. Well, the Patriots well over 200 yards rushing the football as a team this afternoon. Ivory at 93, Cunningham 85. They're probably up over 250. Second down, Calhoun on a counter. 40, out of bounds inside the 45, or just before he hit the 45-yard line. Don Calhoun. And now all of the New England backs are running with that reckless abandon 
They seem to have things in control. Well, I'll tell you why they're doing so well. Beside the fact that they have great ability, they've got an offensive line that's Five popping eight. out there. They're hitting. The, the guards, when they're pulling, they're coming out, and they're hitting people. They're not just going out and running. They're finding somebody to hit. Okay, Len, once again, here's that address to send your tax-deductible contribution to help our American Olympic athletes. U.S. Olympics, Post Office Box 1980C, Cathedral Station, Boston, Mass., 02118. And we thank you very much. Calhoun runs right in to number 71, Mike Kadish. Nope, 74, I beg your pardon, D. Hardison it is. The rookie out of North Carolina State who was the man who made the stop. And so it's going to be second down now for Grogan. Ten yards to go, no gain, but he has got the clock on his side as an ally at the moment. 11.20 to go in the fourth quarter and leading 14-3. to And the Patriots go to the double tight end offense. Well, what has to happen, the Buffalo has to score two touchdowns. They're 11 points down, they've got to score two touchdowns. New England knows this. They'll be content you know, to run out the clock, pick up the first down that they can. So they've got to stop the run. It's Ivory on the sweep. Nothing doing. Lost the yard in here. Played very well by Shane Nelson, 59, and McClanahan, 54. And so it's third down. And Grogan really didn't want to put it up in the air, but he'll have to. Seattle leading 21-16. Zorn threw to large in 31 yards. Mike Phipps came right back. Hit Roland Harper with a touchdown pass. 21-16 Seattle, third quarter. Big third down play now for the Buffalo Bills because they've got to stop and they've got to get the football back because with ten and a half minutes remaining in the ball game, two touchdowns is what they need to win it. They've got to get the ball and get on the board. Jackson goes wide left, Morgan to the right. Before this day is over, I promise I'll straighten those two receivers out. This one is for Jackson. He's got him and he overthrew him just off his fingertips. At the 20-yard line, Charlie Rooms had the coverage, but Grogan just threw in a hair over the outstretched hand of Harold Jackson. Yeah, he did, and also that's the one spot in the whole field, if you can see over there the brightness, that the sun shines down on that one particular area down there. It could be that perhaps Harold Jackson didn't see the ball all the way. You can see right there that that's the sun spot, and it's just a little bit beyond. It could be that the sun might have gotten in his eyes, and he wasn't able to run under it. Maybe he didn't see it as clearly as he would like. Well, Ferguson isn't the only one who's not had a particularly good day throwing the ball. Grogan is only 5 out of 16 for 65 yards. Here's Gerald Wilson's punt. Moody at the 10-yard line. 15. Trying to get outside. And he's out of bounds at the 22. Number 37, James McAllister is the man who ran him out. So the Bills have it, not in as good field position as they did moments ago, but they have the football. You know, Lenny, in sharp contrast to some of the problems that other teams have had with their cheerleaders, the Buffalo Bills say these Buffalo Jills have given them nothing but joy this year. They make civic and charitable appearances, and on one occasion, they made a communion breakfast, would you believe? I would believe it. There are some lovely young ladies. So Buffalo, more than happy with their cheerleaders, which is more than we can say for some other teams. Ferguson, an out pattern to Chandler, and it's complete. Chandler's first reception of the day. To perfection. To perfection. Number 81, Bob Chandler. It was just a matter of time before he got his hands on the football, but he made that move on the sideline that the real good receivers make. He caught the ball. He was hanging over the sideline. I there's not all the players aren't the ones having fun here today. <laughs> that thing's been bouncing around in front of our location. We're out in the open here at Rich Stadium Buffalo. We are not back in the press box. Thankfully, it's a lovely day. 67 degrees of game time. Curtis Brown for the first down as he busts Brown across the 35 to the 36 yard line. So Buffalo has the first down, but the clock is working against them. And line. what they, they're doing out there, what they should be doing, they better uh, step up the pace out there. You know, you've got to get in and get out of that huddle. They're two touchdowns back with nine and a half minutes oh, remaining. Yeah, yeah. German Smith has gone in from six yards out. Seattle's lead blossoms to 12 over Chicago, 28 to 16. Still in the third quarter, they could end up scoring 100 points over there. Anytime Seattle's in a game, they could, uh, if you get a hot team against them, the two teams can score a ton of points. Play action. He's got a man in behind Frank Lewis, 45-yard line. Good catch. Mike Hayes, the reporter, the cornerback, made a good move, making sure that he stayed in bounds. He's well aware of the clock. What I'm saying about the Buffalo Bills is, well, they're two touchdowns back with nine, nine minutes remaining in the ball game. They've got to score twice, so 
You got to get that tempo going a little faster. In and out of that huddle. Well, who's responsible? Is that the quarterback's job? Part of it. The other part is for the, the coaches who are calling the plays to the sideline to get things moving, make up their mind before the play. You know, before the, this play is run, they better know what they're going to call in the next play, whether it works or whether it doesn't work. Okay, Chaz Knox, get a move in here. All right, that didn't work. They should have a play right now. It's going to be third down and short. Hooks did not get the first down on that carry. As you look at Chuck Fairbanks behind him, Andy Johnson. Fine running back of the New England Patriots on their side of the field. Forty-four thousand eight ninety-seven here in attendance at Rich Stadium, Orchard Park this afternoon. And incidentally, a little piece of trivia in Buffalo here, as you see the measurements, the Bills a little shy. They have the biggest gate sale of any National Football League team. They average about ten thousand tickets sold on game day, Len. Well, that that is really amazing. I think at one time they might have had what up to 17,000 sold on game day. And I think that's, that's unheard of in the National Football League. Of course, of course, they'd like to have it the other way around, like most of the NFL teams, and that's to be sold out with season ticket holders. <laughs> that is but, true. But they don't have it. That is true. So on a nice day, people look outside and say, "Hey, the snow isn't over our heads, so let's go see some football." Third down, less than a yard, as you saw on the measure. Buffalo trailing New England, 14 to three. 8-10 to go fourth quarter. They got to make it happen, and they got to make it happen in a hurry. Brown trying to sneak for the first down. I don't know. Well, I don't know whether he made it or not either, because they were bunched up in the middle. I'm talking about the Patriots. Richard Bishop, 64, was there. At the bottom of the pile, you see big uh, Greg Shawm, 76, hovering over the pack, second-year man out of Michigan State. Well, referee Chuck Heberling, I believe, is calling for the chains again, so the clock is stopped. They get a lot of advice out there, those officials, from both sides. Wow. Oh. He made it. Yes, sir. Oh, that's yes, close. sir. Maybe an inch and a half. <laughs> that's the most. That's all they needed. So the drive is still alive. As the Buffalo Jills go back to work, try to urge their bills onward. Trailing 14 to 3. Haven't really threatened except for the one time they fumbled the ball at the five-yard line in the third quarter. Their offense has been almost non-existent. Lewis split left. Chandler in the slot goes in motion. And a little out to Chandler. Though, trying to cut it back. And he's thrown out of bounds on the far side by Raymond Claiborne at about the 46 of New England. So he picked up seven on the catch. That was a good throw by Ferguson that time. He's thrown a couple of those quick outs on the inside. That time he got it to the outside. Chandler was able to make the catch. Even if he had missed it, the ball would have probably bounced out of bounds. No fear of an interception, giving him an opportunity to turn and maybe pick up some additional yardage. What will bring Ferguson's confidence back to him? Obviously, it's been waning in recent weeks. The confidence will come back with success. How much of it? Well, just to know that he is doing what he is supposed to be doing and doing it well. Chandler in motion again. Prentice McCray follows him across the field. Miller on the pitch to the 45. Never really got there. The Patriots really gunning up the defense. 57 is Nelson. Zabel is there, 54. And good lateral movement by those four outstanding linebackers of the New England Patriots. They're trying to go uh, two games up in the Miami Dolphins today. They lead by one. The Dolphins in about 30 minutes will bump heads with the uh, ever-tough Dallas Cowboys. Well, I'm sure Miami's saying to Buffalo, hey, get in and out of that huddle. It's six minutes to go or six minutes, 20 seconds to go, and you're down by two touchdowns. Chandler wide left, Frank Lewis to the right. Lewis started out like a house of fire earlier in the year. He was acquired in an off-season trade with Pittsburgh, but he has pooled considerably. Over the middle, it's Reuben Cannon. Excellent catch. And that should be good enough for a first down. He caught it in front of Tim Fox, the free safety, but Gant has been the most reliable receiver all day. Boy, he made a fine catch. This ball, he had, he had determined he was going to Reuben Gant because you can look at Ferguson right here. He's following him all the way. And he drills him. It's really a great catch. He uses his hands right there with the defensive man all over him. That's only his third reception on the day, but all three have been in very key situations to keep drives alive. At the 40-yard line of New England, here come the Bills. 5.30 to go, fourth quarter. Devlin pulling out of the line to pass block before anybody else did. 
And that will be a legal procedure. And Mr. Devlin is having one very nasty day. Well, he's having his problems there again. You know, that's where the tempo is set, you know. That's why you want to get a quick tempo up there. Get up there and get up on a quick count. You're not fooling anybody. They're going to throw the football. Everybody in the whole stadium knows that. They're down by a couple of touchdowns. But if you get things moving... Ball start, number 68, offense. First. If you get if you get things moving, things can you know, maybe really pop in a hurry. Who'd he call? Delamalier, 68. Well, we have falsely <laughs> accused again. The prosecution rests. Oh, well, it was really hard for Devlin to hide yep. on that last play. Delamalier is the man they called for it, number 68, and not Devlin the tackle. Ferguson, first and 15. They got him. Back at his own 47-yard line. In the grasp of Tony McGee, 78, is the best pass rusher that the uh, Patriots have, and Lunsford was also there. McGee normally comes in in passing situations, and it's obvious that uh, this is a time when Buffalo has no choice but to put it up. As you see, only one sack today for the pass. Seven-yard loss. Second down, 22. The Bills now moving in the wrong direction. And so are the fans. They're heading for the exit. Five minutes to go. 11 points down. I can hear the murmuring. Same old Bills. Ferguson trying to spark something here, trailing 14 to 3. The Patriots did not exactly set the house to fire either in this ball game. He's got a man, Chandler. Oh, and it was tipped by Prentice McCray at the last moment, but a flag is down. A flag is down in the backfield of the Buffalo Bills. McCray is the man who had the coverage on Chandler. And it's against Buffalo. And he's going bad to worse. We can almost hear the referee. I think he's inadvertently turned his mic on. Let's see what they're saying. Illegal motion, number 47, offense, refuse. You know, the, un done. the unfortunate thing about this from, from Buffalo's point of view, Len, it's not just one guy. Everybody's making errors today. Well, that's true, and, that's, and a lot of that is concentration. You know, when you're jumping off sides and pulling back like Joe Devlin did and doing these things, it's a matter of concentration. 20 to 14, the Steelers, Bradshaw to Rocky Blyer. Tony Galbraith has put uh, New Orleans on top 14 to 13, but the Cedars have come back to take a six-point lead. Ferguson setting up the screen. Terry Miller at midfield. Trying to reverse the field. 42-yard line. Oh, yeah, Tony, Miller. Tony, McGree, Tony McGee, 78, is the man to tackle him. And so they spot it on the 42. It will be third down. Or is it fourth down? Yeah, fourth down. They've had so many penalties here that the board has not caught up with the situation. It is fourth down and 12 yards to keep the football. And it's obvious what Buffalo has in mind. Chandler wide right. Lewis to the left. And you can bet Ferguson will get a rush here. They've got four defensive linemen in. They're coming with the linebackers also. Throws an out pattern incomplete. Too low for Chandler. And right at the first down marker. Raymond Claiborne was there, but the Bills will have to turn it over. And with four minutes to play, the New England Patriots seem to have this one well in hand. A reminder that following us immediately, the Sperry NFL report here on NBC scores and highlights of other games as you see Horace Ivory. Pick up a quick nine yards to midfield. Very NFL report immediately following our telecast here. You'll have a final, I'm sure, of that Atlanta-San Francisco game that has the Falcons well in the lead at this point. And San Fran, having lost Pete McCulley this week, seems uh, not to be doing any better under their new head coach. Well, right now, what this game is all about with three and a half minutes remaining is the Patriots are going to try to run that thing out. Buffalo should have 11 people up there. You know, they get, they're going to run with the football. They might as well have 11 up there and try to strip them the ball. Well, that eight-yard carry, Horace Ivory has reached the 100-yard mark. Ivory trying to go outside oh. to the 45, 40. Still on his feet to the 35 and out of bounds on the far side. Horace Ivory running with the football. Lucia Sanford is a man who made the stop, but this kid is really impressive. 
116 yards and 13 carries. He earned the start today, although we told everybody about it. Then saw Andy Johnson in the first place. Well, they, have, they have four running backs. They don't even use James McAllister that much. They've got four running backs that you can hand off to any one of them, and they'll do a great job. But I, the great thing, I think, about Patriots and their, run, and their running backs is they just don't carry the football. When they're not carrying the football, they do an excellent job of blocking. From the 32-yard line, first down. And to give to Ivory again. They're trying to get him up even higher. At the 30 and run out of bounds on the far side by Steve Freeman. You know, we failed to mention, too, that in all due respect to the Buffalo defense, they have had to play today without their normal starting uh, strong safety, Doug Jones, who's out for three weeks with an injury. There's a holding call against the Patriots. Which all that does is stop the clock and prolong this thing. Two minutes, 24 seconds remaining in the ball game. Haven't you heard of miracles, Dawson? In Oakland, I have. I've seen this. <laughs> You've experienced a few against you, huh? That's right. Holding. Holding. Offense. Offense. Number 39. Number 39. First time. No wonder. I just got to what great blocks and they are. Pittsburgh, 20. New Orleans, 14. Don't forget, all the scores and highlights Giants, following us immediately. Fourth quarter, Atlanta 21, San Francisco 3. So first down at 20 now for the New England Patriots around the Buffalo 42-yard line. This undoubtedly will be the last play before the two-minute warning. That is, I'm assuming they're going to keep it on the ground. And as he has done in every game. Look at here. Yeah, play action. Oh, my. Well, he underthrew his intended receiver on the near side, Harold Jackson, number 29. As I started to say, Len, as he has done in... Now 31 of 32 ball games. Brogan will go the distance. That's the way that Chuck Fairbanks likes it. He likes he's a one quarterback uh, coach. And I guess if I were playing quarterback and I were that one quarterback, I'd like it. If I, if I didn't happen to be the, that one. I went through five years of that in the National Football League. Boy, you ever went to Kansas City, wasn't you? Yeah, sat on the bench because the coaches were one quarterback uh, coaches. And the problem is that uh, I, this isn't true of Tom Owen. I know that. But I know it was in my case that after a couple of years and the season rolled on and I only got in the ball game when it was all over, I wasn't as prepared as I should have been. Well, let's see if this takes us down to the two-minute warning. They got in trap. Fumbles the ball! And the scramble is on. The Patriots go to the bill cabin at the 32-yard line. 78, Scott Hutchinson. Well, I suggested that miracles do happen. They've got a long way to go, but they got the football they, back. They could do it at two minutes and ten seconds, but they've got to hit quickly. Got to get on the board quickly. Well, New England just the replay, walk around there, taking their time, thinking the thing was all over, listening to me, I guess. And I don't know what he had in his mind. He should have just put the ball away, taken his loss, and say, all right, gentlemen, we'll come up and run the ball, and eventually punt it away, no problem. Tom Graham, number 55, is the man who forced the fumble. Well, all of a sudden the game takes a little different turn here. From the 33-yard line. Yeah, three wide receivers in the ball game now. One running back. One back is Curtis Brown. Ferguson, good protection. He's got Cannon. Ooh, did he get hit? At the 27-yard line. Steve Nelson really battered him and made him pay for the completion. We've come down to the two-minute warning. The Bills have it. The Patriots have the lead, but we ain't dead yet. We'll be right back. With Len Dawson, this is Sam Nover back at Bridge Stadium, Orchard Park, New York. Chuck Knox is thinking, Len. Yeah, he's thinking, can I get in there quickly? If I can get in there quickly, we might have a shot at an onside kick. This thing is no for but he's got to get into the end zone. Second down and three at the New, or at the New England 27-yard line. Chandler goes in motion. case it's probably defensive holding and undoubtedly they'll take that play because they're down to the 10 yard line 10 yards away and the clock is stopped the break for the buffalo bill they'll have it first down and 10 at the 10 and a half yard line which means buffalo can still get the first down 
without scoring the touchdown. Zabel and Fox make the stop. Here's referee Heberling. Offside. Offside. Defense. Defense. Number 57. Number 57. Refuse. Refuse. First time. Steve Nelson coming on the blitz, man. Well, that's a big break because that was a free play for Buffalo regardless of what happened. As it turned out, they came up with a big play 10 yards away or just a little over 10 yards away from the touchdown. They got four shots. If they throw the ball four times, it wouldn't take more than 20 seconds, 25 seconds. Well, do. all of a sudden, Ferguson's staff start to look a little better. They send Roland Hooks in motion. Ferguson rolls that way. Oh. He's got Hooks. He throws in the end zone. Oh. Touchdown! Chandler! What a fabulous reception by Bob Chandler. Well, they got away with it that time, but he hadn't caught anything until just a couple of minutes ago. Now, all of a sudden, number 81... Came into the ball game, came into the picture, and they're back in this ball game. They're shooting this to go, almost shooting to go in the game. He did have hooked all by himself over there to the right, but he got it through there. Number 81, Chandler, coming up with a fine catch and keeping his feet in bounds. Look at those feet right there. That's a great shot. Great shot by our camera crew and Harry Corner. Oh, he had excellent coverage. Raymond Claiborne and Prentice McCray. The more I look at that shot, the more I envy Ferguson, he really had to thread a needle. They had 10 guys on the field. They may get this one blocked. It doesn't make any difference. Puts it up and good, and I think they only have 10 out there. How about this? 147 to play in the fourth quarter. The Bills are back in it, trailing 14 to 10. I keep thinking about that Curtis Brown fumble at the five-yard line. Earlier in this half, or we could have a different ball game altogether. Well, that's, that's correct. And in particular, at that particular time, he, you know, he fumbled when they didn't get any points. They had to even got three points at that stage. It made a big difference. Now, Tom Dempsey, I talked about this earlier. He has an anniversary Wednesday. Do you have any idea what it is, Len? His wedding anniversary. No, it's the eighth anniversary of his 63-yard field goal against the Detroit Lions. That's the day he got married, by the way. November 8, <laughs> 1970. Tom Dempsey, a record that still stands in the NFL, 63 yards, kicking for the New Orleans Saints against Detroit. Claiborne is deep. The onside kick. No, oh, that is going to... That didn't go 10 yards. He tried to trick him. Old Tom <laughs> tried to trick him a little bit. He, cut, he caught it about eight yards downfield and then tried to push it. Get one of those uh, Oakland Raider uh, holy roller shots. Now, take a look at this. See if it goes 10 yards before he gets a hold of it. Five, six, seven, seven, eight. eight. <laughs> now he'll drop it. Look at that. No, I didn't touch it. Well, he tried to recover his own kick. The flag went immediately. There's a lot of discussion going on in the neighborhood of the 45-yard line of Buffalo. I think New England's going to get the ball right there and refuse the penalty. If they have a choice. We have a procedure on the kicker. Touched by the kicker in the first 10 yards. Recovered by the receivers. Refuse the penalty. First time. Ah, uh, that was beautifully done, Mr. Heberling. From the Taking a look at it here now. What Dempsey's trying to do is kick it 10 yards, follow that ball right down there, but it took a bad bounce right there, and the bounce back in his stomach. He tried to say, well, no, I didn't really do that. <laughs> but he touched it, which is a penalty. New England came up with the ball. A minute 47 to play. Actually, not a second clicked off the clock there. From behind, brought down at the 47, gained the yard. Now they call a timeout immediately. Stop the clock with a minute 42. Buffalo has all three of their timeouts remaining. They'll be able to stop it after downs one, two, and three. Get the ball back with nothing left. As far as timeouts are concerned, drove in to have a word with Chuck Fairbanks. And you noticed that last time they had everybody up on the line of scrimmage. They were going, they were, they were playing the run all the way. I suppose Grogan, if he really wants to take a chance, he could throw it. There was nobody in the secondary. But what they're trying to do is get penetration in the backfield, try to strip that running back of the football. One guy, one man will grab him, the other man go for the ball. It'll be second down and nine when play is resumed. And the Bills obviously playing the run here. And as Len pointed out, no pass wouldn't be that call, except if you didn't complete it, it would stop the clock. And that's the last thing that you want to do at this particular point of the game. Don't forget, the Sperry NFL report follows our game immediately. Bryant Gumbel, Mike Adam Lee scores and highlights around the entire National Football League today. And as there is every Sunday afternoon, some real surprises in the NFL. 
this one could turn out to be well, the biggest win of all. I'll tell you what, when Grogan went back in the huddle, he should be telling, I'm sure he is telling his back. One thing, if you remember, just one thing, hold on to the football. Keep both hands on the football. Second down nine. The clock will not start until Grogan takes the snap. The Bills have two timeouts left. Look at that, a bootleg. He's 45. Got it. <laughs> 40's got the first down and out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Well, they had a shot at him. They had a shot at Grogan. He outran the pursuit and then had clear sailing down the far sideline. Well, I tell you, they should have been looking for that play. He's run it so far this year, faking it. I say look for that play because there's no exchange, no handoff. Just from the center to the quarterback, he's carrying the ball in the wrong hand right there. He should be out on the other hand, away from pressure. But he's getting as much as he can, getting out of bounds. How would you know about that? You never ran successfully with a football game. Yeah. I, I did that once against but Oakland. They changed the rules the next year. <laughs> they changed the rules. They thought I was running out the clock when I took off. Len Dawson. Well, you survived a lot of years, hey, my friend. In my youth, I should be able to run the ball. Now, <laughs> those are Dawson's stats for an entire 19-year career. 24 yards and five rushes. Ivory inside the 20 to the 19. Ivory carry. Minute 27 to play. You don't know that. Who was the leading rusher in the for the, for the for the Chiefs in the first Super Bowl game against the Packers? Well, how about Robert Holmes? He wasn't even with the team. Well, don't ask me again. <laughs> you are kidding. How many yards did you have? I don't know, 20 some yards. That shows you how potent our running attack was that <laughs> afternoon. Kansas City Chiefs. The Bills stop the clock again. I believe they have one timeout left. Yes. They have used two. A minute 23 to play. The best laid plans. The Bills had hoped to keep the Patriots hemmed up around midfield, but Grogan really broke their back. If you may recall, against the Oakland Raiders, when this uh, New England team came from behind. It was Grogan on that same play, a naked reverse, taking it down close where they, they scored and won that football game against the Oakland Raiders. That's a dimension that he gives this football team, his ability to run with the football. Now what he has to learn is don't give it to the other team. <laughs> He's given it to the other team a couple times this afternoon. Second down and one at the 20-yard line. And straight ahead to Calhoun. He's got the first down, diving to the 15-yard line. And the Bills use their last timeout, stopping the clock with a minute 17 to play, and they can stop it no more after this as we look at Calhoun again. Well, he's telling him, just go ahead, get the first down, but hold on to the football and do it with both arms. There's a little daylight there with that football, though. If somebody would hit that, look at the way he was carrying that. We could go back with that. The way he was carrying that football, that if somebody... Looky here with the magic of TV. If he, the way he's carrying that football, if somebody would have nailed him with their headgear, that ball would have popped loose. It is not secure. That is not the proper way to carry the football. But the results, that's mean, what you're looking that, for. That is what you call the textbook example no, of how to run with it. Yeah, you, you got to get the point of that football over the palm of your hand and make sure that it's quite secured under your arm. And in that case, also, in running in the middle of the line where you can get hit from both sides, you should get both arms drawn, particularly in a situation like this. They don't care about the score. Now Calhoun says, to heck with the textbooks. I'll just <laughs> carry the ball the way it gets me the most yardage. Minute 17 to play. This is Calhoun again to the 10-yard line. And it would appear at this point that New England has no problem in running out the clock. They have a second down situation, five yards to go. The ball spotted right on the 10-yard line. And the clock continues to roll. We're under a minute to play. Andy Johnson comes in. Calhoun is in the backfield with him, and you see the inserted clock. Fourteen to ten. The New England Patriots leading the Buffalo Bills appear to have this one sewed up. Calhoun again. Down under the pile at the seven-yard line. Stopped there by Kadish, 71. They do not have to run another play. They, they do not. The clock, 25, counting down. I'm sure that they'll, they'll just stay in the huddle, go over and pick up the ball, and go to the dressing room. Well, it certainly got exciting at the end, didn't it? 
Patriots really have been in command of this ball game, but just have not been able to get enough points on the board to blow the Bills out early. And as it turns out, they just sneak by. Ten point favorites entering the game. The Bills, the Patriots win by four. Len, your closing thoughts? Well, my closing thoughts is that New England won this football game, although they know that they did not play the game very well. They've gotten by it so far this year, several ball games. One was Oakland, they came from behind to win it. Another was San Diego. So they do have the